forma sa airport management. First, nasaan ang report patungkol sa cockpit voice recorder at flight data recorder na ipinadala sa Singapore. Second, sa pagkakaalala ko, may parallel flight safety investigation ang CAAP na siyang nag-iimbestiga sa kung mayroong pagkukulang o kasalanan o liability ang piloto ng eroplano. Tatlong put tatlong milyong piso pa rin ba ang penalty sa shaman o madadagdagan na ngayon sa inyong pag-iimbestiga? At papaano ninyo naisip ang mga multa na yan? Pang-apat, nais natin makita ang accounting ng unrefunded terminal fees na sabi ng NIA ay nagkakahalaga ng 270 milyong, milyong piso. Ito ba ay na-identify na ninyo kung sino dapat kumuha nito? Ano na nangyari sa escrow uh, para dito? Dahil maari sanang maibalik ito sa ating mga pasahero. Finally, would like to hear from the academe and also the experts as to their insights and comments as to what should have been done that day and moving forward. We all know that the Shaman incident is a first in, the, in recent memory of Philippine Aviation, we ought to move forward from this by learning every bit of detail from the incident. The Philippine Senate, our committee, by virtue of its legislative and oversight functions, would like to impart to the responsible and accountable officials in the executive and the rest of the bureaucracy to treat the Shaman incident more seriously with a mindset that the said incident will be the first and hopefully the only one in Philippine history. May our responsible and accountable officials make sure that its policies and protocols never ever neglect the most important aspect of aviation. Ang tinutukoy po natin dito ay ating mga pasahero. Yan naman po talaga ang punot dulin nito, ang servisyo na dapat ibigay natin sa ating mga kababayan at para wag naman sila maperwisyo muli. With that, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our resource speakers today. Let me first acknowledge the presence of Secretary Arthur Tugade of the Department of Transportation, Secretary Carlos Dominguez, the Department of Finance, and then may I ask the rest to please introduce yourselves, beginning with uh, Mr. Monreal. Good morning, Ms. Uh, Madam Chairman. Yeah, Ed Monreal from MIA. Po. Uh, Ruben Reynoso, Jr., Undersecretary for Planning of the Department of Transportation. Good morning, Madam Chair. I am Carmel Orsilia. I'm the Executive Director of the Civil Aeronautics Board. Good morning. I'm Lian from Shaman Air. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mr. Lin Hoa Kun from Shaman Air. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Manolito Manalo from Ocampo Manalo Law Firm, uh, local representative, lo local legal representative of Shaman Airlines. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Jose Manuel Reverente from Aboitis Infra Capital, spokesperson of the NAIA Consortium. Good morning, Madam Chair. Paterno Mataring Jr. from Cebu Pacific and Sebgo. Good morning, Madam Chair. Francisco Inente here, representing Sky Logistics. Good morning, Madam Chair. Bobby Umayam from Macro Asia Catering Services. Good morning, Madam Chair. Um, Neil Marventan from Macro Asia. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. My name is Michelle Pacheco from Macro Asia Airport Services. Good morning, Madam Chair. My name is Clara De Castro from Philippine Airlines. Madam Chair, good morning. I'm Joe San Perez de Tagle from Philippine Airlines. 
Good morning, Madam Chair. I, I'm Alshina Del Rosario. I'm one of the passengers who are affected, who were affected by Shaman Airlines. I'm, good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Mary Ed Celta so good. I'm one of the passengers affected also by this mishap. Thank you. Um, good morning, Mama. I'm from SIAP, President of the Samahan ng Manggagawa ng Damiya. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Eduardo Yap of the Management Association. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Henaro Velasquez, representing the Board of Airline Representatives. Good morning, Chairman. I'm Samuel Dapid of the International Air Transport Association, or IATA. Good morning, Madam Chair. Darwin Conan from Clark International Airport Corporation. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Jaime Melo from Clark also. Operations. Madam Chair, magandang umaga po. Ako po si Administrator Bernard Olalia ng POEA. Oh, good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Hazel Iris Valiatan. I am the Director of the Public Investment Staff of NEDA, as well as the Head of the Investment Coordination Committee, ICC Corps Secretariat. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Art Moncato, Undersecretary at the Department of Tourism. Good morning, Madam Chair. My name is Jim C. Jonko of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Manuel Antonio Tamayo, Undersecretary for Aviation and Airports, Department of Transportation. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Grace Karen Singson, Undersecretary for the Department of Finance, Privatization, Special Concerns. Well, maraming salamat sa inyong pagdalo ngayong araw. Thank you for attending today's hearing. Before we begin with our questions, or if there are any presentations, I would like to ask our new guests to please stand up so that we can administer your oath. Those who haven't had their oath yet from the last hearing. Please raise your right If you hand. want to join again, please, by all means, do so. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? For the record, Madam Chair, those who took their oath answered in the affirmative. Thank you. Um, I find this hearing now very promising. First, we have, for the first time, I think, in um, the Committee on Public Services, we have the Secretary of Finance present today. And I think the key of a lot of uh, the possible solutions to what we are confronted now with the problems rests upon the decision of the Depar Department of Finance and NEDA. Kasi marami tayong mga iniisip na mga solusyon, pero band-aid solution lang to kung walang expansion. At marami dyan ay kung mabibigyan ng permiso ng Department of Finance ang iba't ibang mga proyekto na maaring tumulong dito sa problema natin ngayon para maibsan ang problema ngayon. But before we begin with the modernization and expansion of our air services, I would like to begin with a very basic question. Do we have already a result uh, from the investigation that was the block box that was submitted to Singapore for investigation and review? Um, Madam Chair, uh, for Civil Aviation Authority, may I give an update? Please do, yes. Go the, ahead. Uh, Civil Aviation Authority is currently conducting parallel investigations through the accident, Aircraft Accident Investigation and Inquiry Board and the Flight Safety Investigation Committee with respect to the Xiamen Airlines runway excursion last August 16, 2018. The purpose of the AIB investigation is to determine the facts, conditions, circumstances relating to the occurrences, to the occurrence and identifying the probable cause of the event, which is aimed towards the prevention of accidents and incidents and not to apportion blame or liability. This aircraft accident investigation is an internationally regulated protocol by the International Civil Aviation Organization and the aviation industry. The purpose of this investigation is to promote safety and prevention of similar accidents. The AIB activity is in compliance of the Philippines 
to the international obligations and treaties. On the other hand, the Flight Safety Investigation Committee investigation will look into the possible violations of Philippine civil aviation regulations and the corresponding penalties that might may be imposed for such violations. This committee is tasked to implement our local laws on civil aviation. Aviation safety is of the utmost priority and the Philippines is duty bound under our international obligations to IKO not to disclose safety information that may likely pre prejudice the exercise of the AIB of its duty to establish the cause of accidents. At present, both investigations are underway to determine what caused the accident. Both committees are at work continuing and gathering the of information through interviews with eyewitnesses, examination of records, validation of data from all available sources to arrive at the truth on the accident involving the Shaman aircraft, Airlines aircraft. Kaap will publish the final report of the AIB and EPSEC upon the conclusion of the investigations in the interest of transparency and compliance to international law. And to the question, Madam Chair, where the uh, flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder are, they are with the custody of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. And uh, we are now uh, comparing the cockpit voice recorder with the flight data. And we are also in touch. We need to have a meeting with the representatives from the uh, state of registry of the aircraft, the state of operator, and the, our counterpart, the Civil Aviation Authority of China. Thus far, Madam Chair. So you're saying, sir, that the investigation's not done yet? You don't have any conclusions yet or any findings? That is correct, ma'am. Now, the flight, uh, the flight data recorder is with you. It wasn't sent to Singapore. I thought that was my understanding initially. And that was sent to Singapore, ma'am, uh, uh, a week after the accident. And then it came back to us a week after from the time day it was sent. So meaning they're already done listening to the, uh, getting the information that they need. Did, have they come up with a conclusion as to what caused the incident? Uh, right, right now, ma'am, we need to validate and verify. We know what happened, where, what time, but how and exactly why we have to piece, piece them together. What do you mean you have to piece them together? There, there are no conclusions based on the findings in Singapore? Or you would like to exercise prudence and compare it to your own investigation findings? That is correct, ma'am. So they do have a conclusion? The, the findings are uh, primarily printouts and readouts. We need to, to analyze and compare this com uh, chronologically, uh, compared what the aircraft was doing at the same time what the crew was talking about. So, ang sinasabi po ninyo, tatagalugin ko para mas maintindihan ng ating mga kababayan at um, nating lahat. Yung pinadala ninyong flight recorder sa Singapore, Ito po ay naanalisa na nila. At sila po ay nagbigay na ng impormasyon base dito sa pinadala ninyo. Pero wala pang konklusyon o meron na pero hindi pa ninyo sila, um, hindi pa ninyo ito tinatanggap. Yun ang tanong ko. Meron na ba silang konklusyon kung ito ay um, aksidente na dahil sa bagyo o dahil sa ulan at hindi dahil sa kasalanan ng piloto? Tukol ho dyan, ma'am, uh... Yan ay kailangan pagtugmatugmain namin. Wala hong uh, read out lang ho siya, wala pa siyang conclusion. At pagkatapos ng conclusion, lalabas pa kami ng rekomendasyon. So, ang, ang bale ang nagbibigay ng conclusion dito sa atin, hindi sa Singapore. Tama ba yon? Pero kahit pa paano, di ba, meron silang printout. So, masasabi ninyo doon kung meron ng pagkakamali kung sino man. It, ito ho yung ma'am ang uh, prenoprotektahan natin kasi ayaw ho natin mag-break ng uh, protocols internationally. 
kasi ang international practice ho ma'am is kailangan ito hindi mo pwedeng ilabas hangga't hindi ka sigurado na yan na ang konklusyon. So kailangan mangonsulta kami sa mga gumawa ng airplano, mangonsulta kami sa airline na nagpapatakbo nito sa training ng mga piloto at sa, sa piloto mismo. Doon lang namin na masasabi ma'am na ito talaga ang nangyari. O oh, sige. So hindi 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 ko kayo pipilitin diyan. Hindi ko masyado maintindihan itong airline protocol but I'd like to give you the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps at some point pwede tayong mag-usap um, on an executive session para ma-discuss natin ito ng mas maayos. Pero ito na lang, yes or no na lang po ang sagot. Meron din partial findings ang Singapore. Partial finding in, in a sense, ma'am, kung ano ang na-readout. Para... Kung ano ang... So, merong readout na magsasabi kung sino ang may sala dito. Hindi ko sinasabi yung tatanggapin natin ito kaagad, no? Kasi marami pa. Pero merong, merong mga nakita siguro mga maari hindi dapat nangyari. Na, uh, I most welcome an executive briefing, ma'am, kasi... Pag naglabas ho ako ng opinion ngayon, kasama ho siya sa protocol na hindi dapat isinishare publicly. So, meron siguro. Okay. So, ganito na lang po. Um, matanong ko kayo, no? Kasi, ang kaap, basically, sa kaap kayo, hindi ba? That is... Kayo ang merong prerogatiba kung gaano kalaking penalties ang ibibigay ninyo. Di ba? Kayo, nasa discretion mo yon correct? Na... Na nasa discretion ho ng kaap depende sa nakasulat sa regulasyon at ano ang kaakimat na na violation mo at okay. saka penalty. Bakit sabi po sa akin kung sino mga miyembro ninyo na ngayon ay magiimbestiga dito at magtutugma ng mga ng mga data at findings dito. Itong tinatawag natin na Aircraft Accident Investigation and Inquiry Board, meron ba? Meron um, ma'am, ang Director General who uh, base sa Republic Act 9497 as, as the Chairman. So At kayo sa, po yung Chair? Yes. O uh, sino po yung mga miyembro ninyo? Yung uh, me members ho niya ay dalawa, yung taga mismo organic ng Aircraft Accident Investigation Board na empleyado din ho ng ka. Pwede ba malaman ang pangalan niya? Hindi ko eksakto. Ang, ang unang member ay si uh, Ronda. Ang isa ay si Bakulinaw. Ano no? Ronda? Yan ang apelido? Yes, ma'am. Tapos ang isa? Si uh, Rainier Bakulinaw. Ano pong kanilang kwalifikasyon? Uh, train ho sila sa Civil Aviation Authority as Aircraft Accident Investigation Board. Sino pa po ang mga miyembro ninyo? Ang ibang magiging member ho nito... Sa human factors ay yung flight surgeon namin, si Dr. Bayaban. And then, ang ibang members nun ito would be a representative from the aircraft uh, uh, operator and uh, as observers, aircraft uh, state of registry as a representative, at saka aircraft of uh, state of manufacture. In other words, yung Bo Boeing. Ho. Boeing? Yung Boeing, kasi itong yung, yung airplane, Boeing 737. Sila ho ang may expertise. Lalo na ho dito sa Pilipinas, wala ho itong modelo na ito dito sa atin. So, there will be a point in time where we have to refer this to Boeing and compare and simulate the flight, how, how it was conducted. So, ma matanong ko rin kayo, no? Dahil sinasabi ninyo na Ito yung mga miyembro. Nakita-kita na ba kayo? Hindi pa. Ang um, yung members so sa na foreign based, hindi pa ho ma'am we are trying to uh, find time to do it uh, sometime next week ho. Base ho sa availability na at sa, sa resources. Pero yung local ho, both aircraft accident investigation board members at saka yung flight safety investigation committee ay nagka-convene na ho. Okay. Pag Dumating na yung mga foreign members o counterparts ninyo, mga gano katagal bago ninyo matapos to? Kasi nandiyan na yung data sa inyo galing Singapore. Tapos I'm sure 
um, yung air traffic control, nag-submit na rin sa inyo ng kanilang um, datos. At sa ngayon, oh, ma'am, uh, mahirap i-commit uh, kung kailan matatapos, lalo na ho yung sa aircraft accident investigation. Kasi mayroon ho pr protocol doon na kailangan mo bigyan ng operator ng 60 days. Ay, yung 60 days na ho yun, ma'am, usually, in my experience, translate ho yun sa national language nila bago nila i-accept accept na or tatanggapin nila na ito ang report final at they, they are in agreement. So mahaba pa ito ngayon, meron kasing initial penalty, di ba? Nasa 36 million ba? Or 33 million? Magkano yung initial uh, estimate of penalties? Yung, yung ma'am, uh, initial amount na sinasabi, I think, is... Uh, 33 million. Galing ho yun sa uh, Manila International Airport Authority as a, uh, a cost recovery of the expenses incurred during the uh, recovery of the air. So, iba pa yun? Iba pa ho yun pa sa yun. Civil Aviation Authority, which is naman against the operator and against the pilots. Okay. Siguro ma... ma Magdako naman tayo sa... Maraming salamat po. Ma mamaya, babalikan ko po kayo. In, um, Mr. Monreal, doon po, Gia Monreal, ano? Yung una ninyong cost um, estimate is about 33 million. Sa ngayon po, mga magkano na? Um, umaabot na po sa almost 72 uh, million. Meron na kang pinag-uusapan na karagdagang uh, 42 million plus. Uh, yan pa yung pinag-uusapan pa namin. Uh, pero nagbigay na ko sila ng, ng indikasyon. Uh, I think they're coming on, the sep on September 12 na, na sa September 12 and 4 to 14, pupunta po sila rito. At mayroon na pong assurance na magbabayad ko sila doon sa unang uh, pinigay naming uh, uh, bid. Pupunta ang shaman para doon magbayad. Dito. Actually po, nagpunta na po yung finance officer nila noong uh, Friday at nagkaroon na ho kami ng pagpapalit ng mga informasyon. At uh, ang huli kong pagkakalam po, uh, next week, uh, uh, this week po, September 12 to 14, yung chairman mismo po pagpunta ho huli rito. Ang shaman ba ay lumilipad pa patungo rito ngayon? Opo. So yung operation sila patuloy pa rin? Opo. Matanong ko kayo, um, medyo technical ito, no? Para lamang mas maintindihan natin. Kasi meron po akong kopya nitong tinatawag natin na Disabled Aircraft Removal Plan. Opo. Uh, kung saan po kayo ay pumirma noong 2017, September 2017. Opo. So in short, these protocols were in place. Opo. Okay. Um, ang mga salient points po dito nakalagay, the, sole response, the, the recovery plan is the sole responsibility of aircraft owners. Opo. Ngayon, in the event that they don't have the capability, obviously because... Uh, they're not based here in the Philippines. Um, that the airport will, the the airport authorities will step in. But you should have. Um, who is your designated aircraft recovery official? Di pa meron meron kayo dapat na ganon sa airport natin at sila rin meron. So sino yung counterpart nila at kayo naman dito sa airport natin sino? Um. Tungkol ho dito sa Siamen, wala ho silang counterpart na um, in charge for recovery. Ang kausap po namin dyan, uh, nung nangyari po yung uh, pagsadsad ng aeroplano, ay yung tauhan po nila, yung local uh, uh, staff nila, at nandun po yung, I suppose he was, uh, or he is the flight uh, ground uh, engineer. Uh, at uh, after a couple of hours, nandito ho naman po yung chairman nila, dumating po sa, at uh, doon mismo sa site, at nagbigay ho siya ng, uh, nag-uusap po kami at sabi niya, uh, they required the, all the help from MIA. Uh, ang amin naman po, uh, base ho sa aming protocol ng ating emergency uh, airport uh, emergency plan, ay nandun po nakalagay as mentioned by you ma'am that uh, uh, pag hindi po kaya ng uh, pag-aari o may-ari ng aeroplano, uh, ang airline, ang airport authorities po ay papasok at tutulong. So, kaya nga, sa so, pumasok kayo at tutulong, pero di ba dapat meron, nakalagay po dito, dapat may kasunduan kayo uh, sa iba't ibang kontraktor na pwedeng 
mag-provide ng service na yon. Kayo po ba ay meron kasunduan sa isang lokal na kumpanya para sa mga insidente ganito? Dahil yung heavy equipment na yan, magkano nga po yun, uh, dapat available kagad pero inabot po kayo ng matagal bago kayo nakapagtawag ng may pupunta doon. So meron ba kayong... Meron ba kayong kasunduan sa mga contractors? Apo. Aside from uh, the uh, MOA that we have signed po sa MMDA, sa DPWH, uh, sa Reticon, uh, meron ho kami sariling equipments. Unfortunately, hindi, wala lang ho kaming crane which is being uh, subcontracted or having a MOA with this uh, uh, outfit that I just mentioned. Ah, pero alam nyo, sir, di ba yung sa huling hearing natin, Apo. nasabi natin na baka hindi na naman kayanin ng DPWH or MMDA dahil uh, yung mga proyekto nila nasa iba't ibang parte ng ano, na malayo sa airport. Ngayon, pwede naman siguro isang pribadong kompanya na on standby. Kayo ba may napili ng ganun? Um, Doon hong pangyayaring yun, uh, yun nga, yung Royal Wala pa. Uh, prospectively ho, nag-uusap na ho kami ng Royal Cargo, yung presidente lang ho ng kumpanya ay umalis ho, nagpunta ho ng abroad. Pagbalik ho, meron ho kami, apart from the current that we have, yung uh, MMDA, uh, Redicon, uh, sila ho kasama na ho, karagdagan namin. Uh, Bakit Royal Cargo? Sila ba may, may equipment may ganun? At that point in time, uh, yung location po nila, they have a, a yard of uh, sophisticated uh, equipments. And napakalapit po sa ating paliparan. Kaya silang... Kaya po yung una na pag-isipan po namin. Siguro dapat ay meron kayong protocol nga na on-call sila, di ba? Apo. Palagi. Tama. Okay. Um, ngayon, siguro matanong natin, no, yung air traffic control representative meron ba dito? Ma'am, kayo po yung... Sir, dito kayo. Mr. Monreal, wag kayong aalis dyan. <laughs> Baka merong uh, pagbibigay ng upuan. Ma'am, kayo, kayo yung nanumpa nung huli, no? Kayo, kayo yun, di ba? Please identify yourself again for the record, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Marlene uh, Singson from uh, Air Traffic Service. Oh, sige, Miss Marlene. Di ba nung huli tayong nag-usap, may lumabas sa social media, di umano, na hindi ninyo sinasabi na yan talaga ay official recording nung pag-uusap ng air traffic control at ng piloto, tama? So ngayon, sabi nyo, ay ibeperipi ka pa ninyo. Nagawa na ba ninyo yun? Uh, through the chair. Actually, ma'am, nun po tayong naghiring ang... Meron na po talagang transcription, yung voice recording, at yung voice logging system namin ay naisubmit na po sa AAIIB. Until now, nasa kanila po yung uh, recording ng voice ng Manila Tower at ng mga traffic at the time na nangyari so, po. So, andito ba yung AAIIB? Ah, ito yung sa... Yung AAIB, sa inyo din po yun, ano? Ah, yes po. Ngayon... Di ba na wala ng contact yung piloto at saka yung air traffic control for a period of time? Am I correct? Ang mga isang minuto lang po, ma'am. Kasi po nakatawag naman po yung shaman sa Manila approach. Yung pong susunod na bahagi na ang air traffic service. So sinasabi nyo nung last hearing natin na normal yon, di ba? Na mga wala, dun sila sa approach magkocontact. Tama ba yon Bali dalawa? Actually, ma'am, may tatlo kaming... Uh, facilities ng air traffic control. Yung en route, which is Manila A ACC Area Control Center. We have Manila Approach and Manila Tower. May kanya-kanya po kaming jurisdiction. Depende po at naka-define po ang boundaries namin based on yung vertical and horizontal. But in the particular recording that we witnessed, um, we heard, there was a, there was a, a a portion there where there was no contact with an air traffic control, but you're saying that they were able to contact another tra uh, air traffic control tower. Is that it, what you're saying? 
What I'm saying, ma'am, is nandun po siya sa approach control frequency. Bawat pong level ng air traffic control facilities, yung, nga po, yung Manila Approach, Manila ACC, at Manila Tower, may kanya-kanya po siyang ginagamit na radio frequency. So kung ang isang aeroplano po ay nakatune doon sa susunod na frequency, ang frequency po ng Manila Tower is 118.1. Ang frequency po ng Manila approach ay iba rin. Depende po kung nasaan silang sector. Okay, so napaka-technical, ano? pero I'm sure, you know, um, this is something that we need to learn. My concern is, so if they were contacting using another frequency, as an ordinary citizen, is th my question is, is this still safe? That the three aren't really, uh, would, would each of them have any idea if, Let's say a pilot contacts one particular frequency over another. Magkakaitindihan pa ba? Magcoordinated pa ba yan? Through the share, yes po. Kasi po, bawat facility, ma, meron po kaming coordinator. Maliban sa alpha controller na mismong nagko-control ng mga flights, meron po kaming coordinator na controllers din po. Meron po kasi kaming tinatawag na hotline sa bawat facility wherein yung bawat facility na yon ay nakakapag-usap. Isang angat lang po nung hotline na yon, naka-open na po ang linya sa approach. So, nung hindi na po siya sumagot sa tower, nag-verify po sa approach at sinabi ng approach, nasa kanila na. Kasi po at a certain level, kailangan mapunta na siya sa susunod na facility wherein yun ang may jurisdiction over that area. So, you're saying, dun sa naging uh, procedure na ginawa ng piloto, walang irregular doon? Wala naman po, ma'am. Kasi po, nung do, he went, when he was about to enter the area of jurisdiction of Manila Approach, duty-bound naman po ang piloto mag-switch doon sa frequency ng ginagamit ng approach ah. para po malalaman din ng mga controller din sa approach kung nasaan na siya at saka ma-separate naman po siya sa mga traffic doon sa immediate area na yon. Okay. So, yun, kasi di ba ang nangyayari, pag lumalabas ang isang uh, bagay halimbawa sa news sa social media, meron palang kaakibat pa na isa pa dapat para makita natin yung kabuuan nito. So, kasi, kaya naman natin to tinatanong, dahil syempre yung iba natatakot pagka uh, Uh, ligtas ba talaga kami pag nawala ng komunikasyon? Yung pala, may mga iba't ibang frequency. Okay, yan ay para sa kaalaman natin. Uh, maraming salamat. Ngayon, um, para magkaroon ng struktura itong ating pagdinig ngayon, ano, para si Secretary Dominguez alam din niya yung kung saan siya papasok mamaya. Doon tayo sa airport modernization po, uh, the next part of the, the hearing. But in the meantime, we'd like to finish in this uh, shaman Um, issue. So before we can do that, I think the most important and critical part is also to hear about the experiences of the passengers, uh, what they went through that day, because from this we can learn what, what, what we should uh, be able to prepare for in, in the future. Let's begin with Ms. Del Rosario. Can you please recount, uh, tell us a story about what you've gone through uh, during that incident? Uh, Thank you po, Your Honor. Good morning po, Your Honor, and sa lahat po. Ako po si Elshina Del Rosario, 34 years old, married, may isang anak at nakatira po sa Manila. Ako at ng mga kasama ko sa Jetstar Airlines Flight 3K766 patungo sa Singapore noong August 18, 2018, Sabado, 9.45 p.m., ay humihingi po ng tulong sa inyo para mabayaran, ma-address ang aberya na naranasan namin ng araw na yon. Kami po ay nakaschedule ng company at family trip na binubuo po ng 13 adults, 1 senior na aking ina, 1 infant na aking anak, 1 toddler, 5 years old na aking pamangkin. August 16, um, ito po yung Shaman Airline News. Mula nang nabalitaan namin ang aksidente ng Shaman Airlines, masugod namin minomonitor ang flight namin. May kakilala din po kasi kami na na-cancel at na-rebook ang flights dahil po sa pangyayari. Noong August 18, Saturday, kami po ng aming pamilya at kasama sa trabaho ay, may, ay mga frequent flyers na po. Lagi po namin nasa isip 
na dapat dito 4 hours kami maaga bago sa oras ng flight. Normally po, ang travel time from Manila to airport ay maximum 1 hour via Skyway or na IA X. Ngunit sa araw pong ito, naranasan namin mag-travel ng 2 to 3 hours. Nag-worry kami kung aabot ba kami sa deadline ng check-in kasi po walang web check-in si Jetstar para sa flight ng Manila to Singapore. Para makaabot po kami ng 9 p.m. check-in ng Jetstar. Doon na lang po kami nagpababa sa arrival area ng Naiya Terminal 1 at umakyat na lang po kami sa hagdanan na may dalang malalaking maleta, stroller at backpacks. Tiniis po namin yung pasakit na ganon para hindi lang maiwanan ng eroplano. Thank God po nakaabot kami. Pagdating po sa airport, sobrang daming tao. First time po namin makakita ng ganong kadaming tao. Yung pila sobrang haba, halos madapa na rin kami kasi ang daming nakaharang na mga maleta at mga tao. Pagdating namin sa check-in counter, tinanong namin agad ang Jetstar kung delayed ba ang flight. Sabi nila, wala pa naman daw ang announcement. Wala din po nakalagay na gate number sa boarding pass at sabi nila, ia-announce na lang. Mabilis naman po ang pila sa immigration, pero paglagpas po na, ng immigration, nagulat po kami sa aming mga nakita. Mas madaming tao sa loob, kung saan, kung saan saan nakahiga, nakalatag, nakaupo, sa sahig, malapit sa CR at sa basurahan. Dahil po, yung mga pasahero, wala pang gate numbers na ina-announce at matinong mauupuan. Lahat ng restaurants ay puno at mahaba ang pila. Buti na lang po, may mga baon kami pagkain na nasa hand carry. Yung tubig na para sa kape at cup noodles ay binibenta ng 10 pesos. Mahina at hindi malinaw ang sound system sa loob ng Naiya Terminal 1 Airport. Kaya ang mga ground staff ng iba't ibang airlines ay naglilibot at sinisigaw yung flight details. 9.45 p.m. po ang flight namin at ang boarding time ay 9.20 p.m. Wala, rin, wala pa rin pong announcement ng gate ng flight namin. Kami na po ang kusang naghanap at nagtanong-tanong ng gate num number namin dun nga po sa gate number 1. Past 10 p.m. wala pa rin boarding announcement. By 11 p.m. pinalipat kami sa gate 2. Dun namin nalaman na yung flight na sinundan namin na 7.30 p.m. ETD or estimated departure ay hindi pa rin nakakaalis pero nasa loob na ng eroplano. Hinabaan pa namin ang aming pasensya kahit puyat, gutom, pagod, stress at nilalabig na kami sa kakaantay. Um, bawat oras nagpa-follow up kami, pero by 3 a.m. doon na kami umalma. Bakit wala pa rin update? Paulit-ulit nilang sinasabing walang advice at wala pang clearance na hindi namin maintindihan. August 19, Sunday, around 4 a.m., nag-announce na ang manager on duty ng Jetstar Pugs na si Ms. Hazel Ann Bobiles at ng piloto na Flight 3K766 kasama yung cabin crew na hindi matutuloy ang flight. Humingi na pa umahinin ang piloto at nagpaliwanag na kailangan nila magpahinga ng 12 hours as standard aviation rules and regulation. Kanina pa sila naghihintay ng go signal kung papali pa rin ba sila o hindi. Pero wala pa rin daw pong binibigay na mga, ng ang mga authorities for clearance to fly. Pagkatapos ng announcement, pinababa ang mga pasahero ng naunang flight. Sama-sama na po kami lahat sa gate number 2. Ang Jetstar, ang Jetstar daw po ay sinubukang i-check in kami lahat, kaya lang fully booked. Uh, tinatry nilang tumawag sa mga fast food chains or ibang restaurants para sa pagkain namin, pero hindi daw available kasi madaling araw na. Sinabihan po kami na 9 a.m. magbibigay ng food. 
Nagtanong kami kung pwede kami na lang maghanap ng hotel na malapit sa airport dahil hindi, na, hindi pa rin po nila sure kung hapon o gabi pa ang flight namin. Pumayag po sila at sinabi nila Miss Bobides at yung piloto basta may resibo, marerefund sa Jetstar Singapore. Ayaw, ayaw na rin po namin kasing maranasan yung sinapit namin noong August 18. Binalikan ulit namin si Miss Bobiles kung may budget at pareho pa rin sagot niya basta daw may resibo. Pinalista pa po niya ang mga pangalan namin para mara-schedule sa same day. Napanatag po ako kasi kailangan na po talaga namin magpahinga. Nagtawag po kami ng iba't ibang hotels kahit sa Ermita at Maldate area near Rojas Boulevard. Pero fully booked po. Sa lahat ng tinawagan namin, sila Hyatt City of Dreams at Midas Hotel lang po ang tumanggap sa amin. Um, hindi po kami kaagad nakalabas ng airport dahil hinihintay po namin yung mga bagahe namin. Around 7 a.m. na po kami nakapag-check-in. Mabait naman po ang Midas at Hyatt kasi... They allowed us to to stay until 2 p.m. No, ang pa check out na po kami past 1 p.m. I received an email from Jetstar with a registered time of 10:54 a.m. Nakasaad po doon yung new time of departure namin na 8 p.m. of the same day, at nakasaad na ang budget was only 4,000 pesos per room, 1,000 pesos for food. per person at transportation. Panatag pa rin po ako kasi pinanghahawakan ko po yung mga sinabi sa amin ni Ms. Bobiles at ng pilot na basta may resibo, ire-refund ng Jetstar Singapore. Past 4 p.m., nag-check-in po ulit kami o August 19 for the new schedule 3K17668 p.m. Doon po kami pumila sa Jetstar Special Assistance Desk. Bago kami mag-check-in, nireconfirm ko ulit yung refund ng hotel booking at sinabi po ulit nila nung babae na naka-assign doon, basta may resibo, ire-refund ng Jetstar sa Singapore. Again, napanatag po ako ulit. Between 5 to 8 p.m., dating gawi po, uupo kami sa sahig, basta bakande kasi wala pong matinong mauupuan. Nakita din namin yung mga cabin crew at piloto so na natuwa kami baka hindi delayed ang flight kasi maaga silang dumating. Ito din po yung chance na kinausap namin yung piloto bakit nagkaganito. He explained and I quote, It is the Manila airport problem, not Jetstar. Again, nireconfirm ko yung refund and he said to keep the receipts and claim the refund from Jetstar. Pumunta na po kami sa gate namin, pero sobrang crowded yung pala nandun pa po yung naunang flight na sinundan namin. Nagwawala na nga po yung ibang nationalities kasi walang announcement. Tapos nagsabi sa amin yung mga kasabayan namin, walang dumating na food nung 9am. Mga after lunch na daw dumating na parang tinapay lang ang binigay. By 11pm, di pa rin kami nakakaalis. Lahat po nagagalit. Kawawa, kawawa po kami lalo na yung mga matatanda at mga bata na sobrang pagod sa naranasan nila. Nagsisigawan na po lahat ng we want a flight. May video po yon pinost ng sister ko sa Facebook. Gumawa ng paraan ng mga ground staff, nataranta na rin po sila. Kasi pagod, antok at gutom na po talaga kami lahat. Past 12 a.m. inannounce na ang boarding namin. Pinagbas kami papuntang Terminal 2 sa loob po yun ng airport. Kasi doon po nakapark yung aeroplano ng Jetstar. To be honest po, hindi po na-pacify ng mga ground staff ang mga passengers. Bilang concerned person po, ako po ang tumulong na na at nag-initiate na ayusin nila yung pila para ma-organize. At makaalis na po kami. Pinauna ko po muna yung mga matatanda at mga may anak and the rest followed. Binigyan po kami ng free food sa plane. August 20, past 2 a.m., we departed Manila. Thank you for the very detailed narration of what you've gone through. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Ngayon, so, Ms. Del Rosario, sinasabi mo, normally it takes about 
one hour, then it took about three hours for your flight. But the entire ordeal, you were there, what day your flight was on the 20, on August 18. August 18 po, 9.45 p.m. August 18, nakaalis ka ng? August 20 na po, past 2 a.m. Okay. Ngayon, uh, ang mga nakalap ko dun sa mga sinabi mo, ha? Unang-una, mahina yung sound system. Yes po. Um, hindi coordinated nga kung anong gate kayo at anong kailan ang flight ninyo. Pati yung ground staff siguro ng Jetstar, hindi rin sinabi from the beginning na merong limit kung magkano ang pwede ninyong gastusin. Kasi yes, naintindihan naman natin talaga na hindi nila siguro kaya lahat ng fees ng mga hotel, pero dapat umpisa pa lang alam ninyo ngayon. Kung 4,000 lang, yun lang ang nabigay sa inyo. Wala pa po. Actually po, Bakit? lagi po kami pinaghihintay at pinagpapasapasahan ng mga call, call center agents po. Ng Jetstar? Ng Jetstar po. Pero ang Jetstar ba, saan ba nakarehistro yan? Singapore? Actually ma'am, ang problema nga po is wala silang tao dito. Ang third party po nila is PAGS. Dating Mia score, tapos nalipat po sila sa PAGS. Kaya nagkaganon. O sige, so... Siguro dapat uh, meron tayong help desk din sa, or uh, representative ng, ewan ko kung sino pwede dapat dito, uh, airline advocate na magpa-follow up dito sa mga air Kasi nagbayad ka siguro with a credit card, correct? Yes po. So dapat mag-credit ka for those days, di ba? Yes po. Actually po, due siya lang ngayon September. Oo. Oh. Um, yun nga po, uh, nag-firm po sila sa akin na last, week Thursday na hindi sila magbabayad kasi Manila daw po kami nakatira. Which is parang, yun po ang reason po nila. Manila po kami nakatira kaya hindi sila magbabayad. So parang, so to lang po para akong na-disappoint na bakit ganun, hindi naman namin kasalanan yun. At hindi po kami magbubuk ng hotel without the permissions of uh, Jetstar Team Tags and the pilot. But, okay. So, tingnan nyo yan, ha? sino ba dito ang dapat magsalita ukol dyan? Civil Aviation Board, uh, Aeronautics Board. Kayo po, ano pong pwede gawin para dito? Akalain mo, ha? kumikita sila sa ating bansa, kumukuha sila ng pasahero, tapos sasabihin nila, dahil Pilipino, walang matatanggap na beneficyo. Tama po ba yun, Cab? Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Actually, uh, uh, we, we have people on the ground that were monitoring the events at the airports, at the terminals. And then we also gathered data or complaints from the social media. And then we were able to gather this information. We issued a show cause order for Jetstar to explain their side of the story and it's now under investigation. In fact, I have with me, Madam Chair, the response of, uh, this is limited only to the food. No? Uh, they, they have a response saying that there was this shortage of uh, food because the uh, providers, maybe because of the big number of people who, were, who needed to be fed during that time, the uh, food providers in the area, in the vicinity, could not provide or address the demand. So this is currently being investigated because under our regulations, airlines, whether it is force majeure or not, are required to provide nourishment, the proper nourishment depending on the time of day for the affected passengers. And this is a little uh, a step beyond what is uh, standard, uh, Madam Chair, because globally, the, the rule is if the uh, cause of the delay or cancellation is force majeure, then the airlines are not liable for amenities. But in the EU, they provide, in the US they do not, but in the Philippines we do. So these things are being investigated. Many airlines were able to provide the amenities required by the regulation. Some of them could not provide the hotels because there were shortages of hotels, hotel rooms also, Madam Chair. And so for example, during the last hearing, Paul testified that they gave, uh, I think, 3,000 pesos for each person who are entitled to, an, to a hotel accommodation. Now with regard to the residency, or residents of the affected passengers. Honestly, we do not have a hard and fast rule in the Philippines yet. We are studying it. But in some countries, for example, in the U.S., if you live beyond 160 miles
from the airport, then you are entitled to hotel accommodation. But here in the Philippines, the airlines do it on a case-to-case -case basis. For example, if the passenger, uh, the delay would last until the morning, or the passenger is a transit passenger, then the airline normally would give, provide the hotel accommodation. So in this case, Your Honor, the, the matter is being investigated by us. We have received a, a reply. Uh, he is a transit passenger, or for example, um, the delay lasts until the next day. So, dito, clearly, because it lasted more than the next day, dapat meron, di ba? Uh, usually, Your Honor, the airline would provide the hotel for those whose houses or residences are outside of the periphery of the airport. Uh, but we do not, honestly, we do not have a hard and fast okay. rule. Because, because if, if they live in Manila, for example, uh, maybe the airline would not consider that uh, appropriate. Kasi po ganito, uh, obviously it's a, we're giving them the right and the privilege to be able to fly their routes here in the Philippines, correct? So before we even accept them or give them the authority, we should have all of those uh, agreements with them. How are they going to treat our passengers? Do we have that on file, sir? Um, any agreement from uh, Jetstar or Shaman uh, with regards to how they treat passengers in situations like this? We do not have an agreement with them, but they are bound by our regulation. When, when they operate to the Philippines, they are bound by our existing regulations. And those and matters... And our regulations state that? Our regulations require that uh, when, when the passenger is entitled to a hotel, depending on the circumstances, that the airline should provide a hotel, Your Honor. Okay. Gano, saan ka ba nakatira? Ah, sabi mo, nasa Manila ka, no? Opo. So baka matechnical. But the fact is, if you have it on record that you spoke to a ground representative and the pilot himself said that you will be reimbursed, this is something that he, she can pursue. Because that's obviously miscommunication on their part, correct? And I agree, Your Honor. She may be entitled. Mm, yes, so, um, and what we do, if I can add, Your Honor, is that when there is a major, major disruption in the airports, we write immediately, we issue advisory to all the airlines, advising them to uh, deal with the problem and uh, provide the necessary amenities to the airlines. In fact, we require them to submit what we call a flight disruption uh, program, management program, which we reviewed. And that's why when we observe what happened during the incident, the airlines, some of the airlines were able to mobilize their people on the ground to enhance the personnel to address the concerns of the passengers. Pero sir, ganito, katulad ni Ms. Del Rosario, sino pwede niyang kausapin sa ating gobyerno para tulungan siya halimbawa dito sa kanyang naging kanyang healing dito sa Jetstar? Sino pwede niyang... Sa so, amin po, ma'am, we, we have a hotline, we have chats, we have people on the airports, we have uh, roving teams. That's why we were able to gather those uh, incident reports. Ano yung hotline po ninyo? Ano yung hotline? 16566. 16566 po. 16566. 16566. Ma'am, Your Honor, can I add something on yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, after po kasi ng flight namin, bumalik na kami ng Pilipinas, yan po ang una kong ginawa. Tumawag ka sa 165? Um, uh, nag hindi po. Out of respect sa Jetstar, nakipag-coordinate po ako kaagad sa kanila for the refund. Tum pumunta po ako sa uh, PAGS, Jetstar PAGS na iya Terminal 1 regarding sa claims namin. Nireconfirm po ni Ms. Bobiles na sinabi po niya yon kaharap po ang mother ko. Okay, so meron kami. Meron po kami meron. acknowledgement. Uh -oh. So out of help din po niya, nag-email po siya ulit sa Jetstar Singapore ng mga receipts po namin mm. at follow-ups. So, Kumbaga po kami, um, ang kami po is, ang after lang namin is matulungan po. Kasi hindi rin po naman talaga namin, hindi po kami mag-book ng walang approval. Correct. Yun po yun. Kung, kung sabihin po nila na mag-stay kayo sa, sa airport kasi wala namang advice, okay po, mag i kami. Mm -hmm. Pero wala po. Tsaka po, Madam, um, Your Honor, yung traffic, na ginugol namin ng Saturday po yun na 2 to 3 hours. 
Sobrang pasakit po talaga. Hindi, talaga. Sobrang Lalo po. na kung meron kang anak, meron kang nakakatandang Opo. kasama. Um, so, sa CAB, ganito, ano, tawagan mo itong number na ito, kumuha ng representative. Anong pwede na lang gawin? Sila ang tata kayo ang tatawag sa Jetstar para mag-follow up? Actually po, ang talagang first recourse ng passenger is the airline dahil meron din naman silang mga tao nagdetail sa mga concerns. Pagka po nag-fail yun at o kaya kailangan ng assisti, eh kami po nakahanda kagad, meron naman kami mga tao doon na nagro-roving, meron din kami desk, may hotline, meron po kami chat that interactive po yung chat namin. Hindi, pero ganito nga eh, kung binabaliwala ka nga ng airline, mm. hindi ka pinapansin, pero valid naman ang claim mo, meron ba kayong pwedeng uh, gumit na sa airline at sa kanila? Opa. Like a rep, an, an authority from, from the cab that will actually facilitate Uh, dialogue with the passengers and the airlines. Meron? Yes po. Kukunin po namin ngayon yung data. Sir, you were, you were trying to say something? Ikaw ba yan? Ma'am, kukunin na rin po namin yung complaint po ngayon para makuha na po namin. Saan, saan ka po ulit? Sa uh, Civil Aeronautics Board po. Ayan. Apo. Ngayon din po. So kukunin po. Sige, maraming salamat. Ganito ah. Na I'd like to acknowledge lang certain things. And then I appreciate that Philippine Airlines submitted this to me. They were saying that, uh, para lang alam natin yung nangyari, um, ang Philippine Airlines, halimbawa, uh, nagkaroon sila ng 5,968 rebooking and rerouting, refund, nagbigay sila ng 742 for total of 6,710, uh, nagbigay sila ng tubig, 38,325, I guess, units, Hot meal, 74,089. Snacks, 19,507. So, maybe not so much, pero ito, sa Davao, nagbigay sila ng rooms, 98. Cebu, 7. Saigon, 343. Hong Kong, 100. Haneda, 318. Manila, 539. So, these reports are important. Uh, we don't know the ratio of the actual... Uh, passengers that were inconvenienced, but at least PAL submitted this. Ito yung aking out of curiosity. Yung sa ating mga ground handlers, yung logistics, no? Sa lahat ng aeroplano, you prepare meals, correct? Sino ba dito sa ground logistics? Kayo, di ba? In charge ba kayo sa mga pagkain? Ganon? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Hindi na tuloy ang flight. Yes. Pero nahanda na yung pagkain na yon. Anong ginawa niyo? Tinapon niyo? Um, good morning once again, Your Honor. Um, discretion na po yan ng airline whether to get the meals and these meals to be fed to their passengers. But it wasn't done, am I correct? Um, some of the airlines did, Your Honor. Uh, some retrieved the meals that we have prepared and uh, they had uh, served it to their passengers. But not, okay, the reason why I'm asking this is There are several posts of people working for the commissaries that provide food for the for the flights, and they were saying that they had to dispose of the food because the flight did not push through. And I think uh, Mr. Monreal and uh, for the cab, maybe this can uh, be a contingency in the future because even if the airport would has the cash to provide food, maybe they won't be able to provide food immediately. But since the flight is canceled, can't they use that food and give it to the passengers that are waiting? Yes, Your Honor, they can. It is the prerogative of the airline to um, claim this meals because they had already uh, ordered for the meals and they, have, they are going to pay for it. And so what they normally do is to have these meals served to the passengers. Oo, um, sa mga airline, di ba pwedeng consider yan? Nakancel ang flight nyo, nag-iintay yung mga pasahero, imbis na masayang ang pagkain, di yun ang ibigay ninyo. Uh, Madam Chairman, we do. Uh, in fact, during tarmac delays, yun po yung immediate na ipapakain po namin. Uh, also, if uh, based on basic food standards po, kung yung quality, quality ng food, eh pwede pa po, then we will serve it. Otherwise, we will not because of a safety reason. So, uh, but also, Your Honor, at that time, we, yung caterer po namin, uh, ang ground handlers po namin, and uh, yung caterers namin, they also ran out of uh, supplies na rin po. So, we had to go outside our caterers. Okay. So, Totoo ba na may mga grand, uh, ground handlers na 
parang nag-boycott at umalis nung mga sitwasyon na yun? May, may narinig po kayo, uh, Ms. Ramon Real? Um, so far, wala naman po. Sa naiya, wala naman? Na umalis, lumabas at hindi tumulong po. Wala, uh, po. wala naman. Um, matanong ko po kayo, nabasa ko kasi sa periodiko na sinasabi ninyo, ang mga airlines, yung mga hindi nagkaroon ng, yung mga nagkaroon ng uncoordinated flights, which is more than 60, 61? No, sir? Total, ma'am, 78 uh, arrival and departure. Okay, so 78. But about 30-something of it were international flights, correct? Majority, uh, or if not all, uh, puro international flights po. Okay, sinasabi ninyo na you will actually penalize them and charge them 5,000 pesos per passenger. Okay, so that will come out to, what's the average number of passengers per flight ba? Mga 200, di ba, for international or 100? On the average, probably yes, ma'am, uh, 200 to 250, but uh, we're looking at the seat capacity of each. Uh, so airline. meaning whether or not there were passengers on, that, on those seats, you will charge them for the number of seats? So we're leading to, ma'am, pinag-aaralan po namin. So, hindi, okay. So if that's your prerogative, that's fine. If you think that it's just, obviously, if they violated uh, pro protocols that could have endangered the, you know, the that would have jeopardized the safety of the passengers. But my question is this, how much are you possibly going to be earning from this minimum? Roughly about uh, maybe 42 million, more what, or less. What, what do you intend to do with that money? Um, stays with the uh, income of uh, the authority. Okay, that's fine to have your income, but for the benefit of the passengers, how, how, how will you improve your services with that money? Um, we have budgets for, if we're talking about uh, moving forward, ma'am, uh, we have the airport. Kasi ganito, um, government is, should not be in the business of making money alone, or should not really be in that business. It should be in the business of service. Okay. So if you have that money, can you tell me, from the incident that happened, what reforms do you plan to do in the airport? Ito na, uh, papunta na tayo sa conclusion natin dito kasi wala pa naman tayo, ano, siguro um, later on with the Secretary Tugade, dito tayo sa modernization, no? Pero ito muna, narinig natin yung kwento ni Ms. Del Rosario. Okay? Narinig natin na yung mga pasahero naghihintay na gano'ng mahina ang sound system, ang gagawin natin dyan. Halos sa tutulog na sa tabi-tabi, anong gagawin natin dyan? Yung ating immigration may problema dahil ang, ang daming pasahero, kulang sila. So, ano yung mga reform ang gagawin mo para yung pera na kinikita ninyo sa airport ay mapunta naman sa totoong servisyo sa ating mga kababayan? Okay. Um, as regards to uh, yung uh, paging system po na sinasabi hindi malinaw, uh, titingnan po namin yan. Uh, dahil uh, ang pagkakaalam ko naman po, maayos, baka on that particular day, uh, may problema, titingnan po na namin yan at kung anong dapat na ipagawa, papagawa po namin. Um, as regards to immigration, um, at uh, yung walang maupuan, walang matulugan yung mga pasero, um, hindi naman tayo ako? airport na I'm may sorry. hotel. Okay, that's fine. Apo. Pero, ano pa, sound system. Pag-aaralan po namin, titignan namin kung talagang kailangan po ipayos. Uh, baka nagkataon lang po yung, uh, yung pangyayaring ganon uh, on that particular time. Uh, maybe because of the many people inside the terminal. Uh, titignan po namin yun. Bakit nagkaroon kayo ng uncoordinated, um, uh, unco uh, non-coordination sa mga, sa mga airlines? Di ba pagkatapos nun, dapat yung crisis board o kung anong tawag sa inyo, dapat nag-meeting. Kayo, how many hours after the incident were you called to a meeting, uh, airlines, with uh, the GM? Uh, Madam Chair, as we manifested last time, we had a coordination meeting with uh, the team of GM Montreal on August 24, which was a Friday. So that was the first time that you actually met 
with GM Monreal? With all airlines and uh, GM, yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Vice Chair of the Committee on Public Services, Senator JB. Thank you, sir. Um, so, but before that, who was coordinating with airport management as to the gate um, assignments, etc.? For for PAL, Your Honor, we do have a safety department that would uh, be coordinating on an hourly basis with uh, personnel of uh, MIAA. Na, but also, ba, nandito ba sila? O, wala po, ma'am. Siguro dapat makausap, ano bang naging breakdown? Bakit ang iba, hindi nila alam kung anong gate ang assigned sa kanila? Sino ba dapat ang nagsasabi sa kanila kung ano ba sa tingin niya nangyari doon? But ma'am, for the, Your Honor, for, for, safe, for, for the gate assignments, uh, I believe our airport personnel who were at the airport at that time would have also close coordination with MIA and ask for gate assignments. But uh, I think because uh, because of um, I think maybe the sheer number of uh, cancellations and delays at the time, it may have caused uh, possible miscommunication or lack of communication just because there was a great number of canceled flights and delays because of the incident. Okay, so when you met with uh, GM Monreal on the 24th, who were present in the meeting, um, airline representatives, uh, what was your conclusion in the, the meeting? What, what, what were the, what points did you discuss? What were the points of discussion? Uh, among others, uh, if I can, I recall, Your Honor, we discussed, GM Monreal actually raised the issue on uh, uncoordinated uh, flights. He asked uh, some of the uh, members who were uh, present at that time. Uh, we also recall, I also recall having been asked about uh, our passenger handling as to how uh, airlines, as to whether or not the airlines complied with requirements under the Passenger Bill of Rights. Okay. Um, Gia Monreal, can you give us can you submit to this committee recommendations uh, that you have so that the airport will function optimally in situations like this or in crisis? Um, not just the technical aspects also of improving, obviously, the, the safety of the passengers through coordination with the, the, the air traffic control, etc., the retrieval, um, the retrieval group, but, but also the services of the airport, basically food and the time in motion to with immigration. Would you be able to submit that to us? We will uh, submit, uh, Madam Chair. You know, recently there was an earthquake in Japan, and, and we know that. And with their, their airport, I, so there was an issue about flooding and drainage, but but they all had they had a master plan as to how to go about their uh, rehabilitation of the airport and, and um, restoring normalcy. So these things, I think, do you have those emergency the, those contingency plans in place? Do you have those, Mr. Morial? We have the contingency plan, ma'am, in place. But if I just recall, some about 10, 15 years ago, Mia was also flooded. Uh, it's really something that, uh, yes, we have a contingency plan, but as to what extent this contingency, contingency plan will be able to be implemented, or depending on the challenge, I probably I cannot uh, uh, say that we're fully covered. So how would you be able to determine that? You have... You'd say that we're not fully covered. So what can we do to make sure that we are prepared? Um, what we do is uh, at a timely or a, we a monthly declogging of all uh, the drainage that we have. That's only what uh, we can do as a preventive measure because uh, that building has been constructed since 1982. So we really don't know if uh, the current uh, drainage system will be able to address the calamities or the future calamities that we will be uh, facing. Um, Senator JV, actually right now we're still discussing about uh, what could have been done during that time. 
and then the second half of our hearing, hopefully we finish by one o'clock, uh, would be about airport modernization and the different uh, proposals. So perhaps uh, just for the record, I'd like to mention Cebu Pacific just submitted this. There are 60 passengers um, that they had rebookings on their website. 25,000 25, bottles of water distributed, 40,000 rice meals distributed. But actually, how many passengers uh, were affected? Uh, Madam Chair, around uh, 36,000 passengers were directly affected. Only 36,000 passengers were, were affected? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. But how come you said 60 passengers rebooked? Ma so they're uh, also affected. Actually, Sixita uh, ang uh, naabot po nung text message, emails namin sa around 100,000 passengers. Ah, so hindi na nakapunta. So yung iba po nag-rebook na, ang nagkapag-rebook po is around 60,000 passengers. Okay, very good. Okay. All right, uh, Senator JV, you have uh, questions regarding uh, the incident. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, everybody. Anyway, just uh, during the last hearing, we pointed out that probably one of the reasons, siguro, looking, look, going, um, Moving forward, look in the future, kung hopefully it just doesn't happen again, pero yung coordination, siguro uh, GM Ed Morial, um, probably um, we can answer yung, or any representative from the airline operators, are they here, aside from Pan and Cebu Pacific? Are, are they, are, are anybody from the airline operators present? Kolabo? Mr. Chairman. I think uh, I'm not trying to volunteer, but the uh, yeah. bar chairman is here, who represents uh, the airlines as well. Okay, so yeah. Yes, good morning. Um, yes, I'm Sir Velasquez. Yes, sir. Can you call representative of the airlines? Correct. Well, 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 one of the things that, uh, siguro, that time, no, hindi naman natin na ano si ang MIA authority because of what is happening also, because siguro hindi naman natin yung ganun ka laking problema rin. But probably one of the reasons that um, this became really out of control, sabi na nating out of control, is because of probably lack of coordination. Sa tingin ko, um, in my own opinion, no, na sabi ko nga last time, if you were here, that uh, because of the rolling no time, may upong notice to airmen na sinabi 12 noon, by 12 noon, magbubukas na, and then 3 o'clock, p.m., and then, and so on and so forth. So, ang nangyari siguro, no, to cut losses, of course, if you're the airline, you will already tell your outport o yung, yung uh, home base to, set, to launch the aircraft already. Tama ko ba? Siyempre, gagawin niyo po yun. And just, uh, tama pa mali? Tama po. Yeah. So that, that's what, that was what happened. Ang, ang sa tingin ko, because of that rolling notice to airmen na binagalong-ganon, kaya nagkagulo-gulo. So nagsabay-sabay uh, siguro ng dating, especially those from the regional and from the long haul, Eh, you already asked them to, to, already, to already launch oh, yung aircraft para papunta dito. Yes, Your Honor. Actually, uh, the, uh, it was really a problem during that, day, that particular day. Um, lahat ng airlines were challenged by the rolling uh, uh, deadlines given by uh, the authorities. Yeah. So it was indeed a problem and challenge for all of us. Again, moving forward, um, siguro hindi rin man... Hindi rin naman natin masisi ang airport authorities that then, um, siguro ang isip nila that madaling maiaalis because, but because of the um, situation that time, di ba, mabigat din yung aircraft. No? It's not, it's not, uh, it's no joke, kahit na 737 lang yun with four tons of fuel and likewise uh, muddy, um, very muddy na tuloy-tuloy ang ulan, nahirapan din. Eh? Tama, um, Jim Ed, Eh di, kahit na doon na mo niya, no? kahit na doon na yung mga cranes yun, nahirapan din nung i-lift uh, uh, ka agad. Dahil hindi kayo makapuesto, tama ko ba? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Tama po. So anyway, moving forward po no, sa air operators, di, di, ano, hindi ba kayo nagpa nagpadala ng any representative or anybody or any emissary? O nag were you just rely relying or waiting for the information? that the, the MIA authority or the CAAP was, uh, was uh, releasing? Uh, Your Honor, um, all of uh, the airlines uh, represented by uh, the board, we were in coordination with the MIA and uh, the CAAP, CAB. 
So there was a coordination. There was coordination. Oh, you, you, you just rely from the information. Yes, correct, Your Honor. Oh. So what, what, what was the ano? Ano pinaka malaking problema? The ruling no tam. That was it. Well, um, you, would you attribute the, all of these uh, chaos as a result because of incoming flights? Um, talaga problema yun eh. Ground handling, I can imagine, it was already a nightmare. Yeah. Yes, Minsan nga lang, naghihintay ka ng aircraft. Pag puno doon, walang ground handling, naghihintay ka eh. Just imagine kung natin ito nagsabay-sabay. So, sige po. Yes, uh, Your Honor, it was really chaotic during that day. Uh, maraming airlines so naka, ano pa, naka pending sa nasa nasa air and they cannot land no, at the MIAA some in fact were diverted to different airports yeah likewise the, the other hearing uh, Jim I, I pointed this out because you got malaking problema talaga yun, lack of coordination Jim Edmorial said that uh, he you were asked, no? because you were supposed to be part of that air, um, airport ano may crisis ma uh, control management sa tuwing magkakaroon ng crisis, kasama po dapat ang airline representative. But during that time, uh, according to um, the MIA, uh, to Jim Edmond Real, the airlines did not, ano, pinapatawag daw kayo, hindi, hindi daw kayo nag -aten. Is that true? The, we have actually two to uh, organizations, uh, the Board of Airline Representatives that's uh, represented by the uh, uh, head of uh, airlines operating in the Philippines. And then we have our station managers, which is which are represented at the airport, and they are the airport operators uh, club. No? Um, they were the one who were called for that meeting, and uh, I think uh, they were all represented during that uh, particular meeting. Uh, anyway, um, again, at least we pointed out, hopefully next time we'll have better coordination this time, no? so that the, uh, we will avoid what happened. No? Um, would you call those, sir? Um, siguro going back, no? um, itong mga going back sa, sa, um, dun sa tinatanong kanina regarding the uncoordinated flights, um, would you call that uncoordinated flights or uh, reco ano, di ba kasama yung recovery flights, sir, GM Ed? It was partly, uh, Mr. Chairman, it was partly a recovery flight. But uh, any recovery flight, for that matter, must be coordinated with the airport authority at least 24 hours before mounting it. So th those uh, 61 were uncoordinated? 61? Bali, 78 na yan. 78. Uh, John, uh, what, what we are really just uh, after is the inbound. Kasi yung inbound po, maraming komplikasyon yun. Walang parking, walang check-in, walang, you know, mas importante yung malaman namin na may parating. Especially yung ground handling, yung gate, lahat yan, kailangan yung malaman. Tama. So, yun po, ano, um, do, we, I have a list, no, of the coordinated, ano, ano po ang nangyari doon? Were they fine or in, because of the situation? Ano po ang, uh, what, what, what was the, ano, what was the action? May na po kaming pina para sa kanila. Uh, it will be soon be uh, implemented pag na-finalize na po namin. Basiyan. I would like to ask the airlines, um, would you, uh, would you, class, would you accept that those, uh, those were called uncoordinated rights? Did you not coordinate uh, with, uh, with the authorities? Uh, each uh, airline received a notice or a letter from the MIA authorities. Uh, about the uh, uncoordinated flights, no? um, the plan of uh, as of last week, all the airlines decided that to attend to their own uh, individual problem because it was addressed to the different airlines concerned. No? So each uh, airline should uh, address this problem individually. So would you would you I know what what's your answer? Is it are really uncoordinated? Would you, would you uh, ask what the, the authorities have said? Well, sir, it will be uh, it will depend on each airline. They will have to talk to the. Ah, it depend, depends on the airline. Thank you. Um, 
Vice Chair. I have a quick question. Maybe we should, um, we should go back to the situation that occurred and the responses that were made. Secretary Togade, with being the Secretary of Transportation, do you hold anyone liable or responsible? Uh, or perhaps, what is your analysis? Who, who are liable for the worsening situation during that incident? Meron na ba kayong nasabon o nasabihan to improve their performance? Uh, ano po yung ipig sabihin ng nasabon? <laughs> <laughs> Meron na kayo na napagsabihan. Sino ba talaga dapat ang uh, responsable dito para hindi naging ganun ang sitwasyon? Uh, una po, Madam Chair, uh, ang Xiamen incident ay nakoso ng Xiamen Airline. Mm -hmm. Kung ang sasabihin ho, meron po ba akong mga taong nasabon o sinabon dahil hindi na asikaso yung estado ng problema, wala ho. Pagkat sa aking pananaw ho, nagawa po ng MIA, nagawa ng CAAP, nagawa ng CAB, lahat ng pamunuan at mga aming kasama, ang kanilang mga tungkulin within the conditions that were there at that time. Uh, in other words, we were acting, Madam, on the basis of foresight. That having been said, nung, uh, 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 habang ginagawa po yun, uh, okay naman po ang pagtatrabaho nila. Liwanagin ko lang po yung nabanggit nung araw na hindi man lang ako pumunta sa, uh, sa lugar. Eh, nandun po ako nung unang araw, hindi lang ako nagpakita. Nandun po ako sa opisina ni Mr. Monreal. Kaya lang po hindi ako nagpakita ng personal. Kasi po, uh, kilala ko po yung presensya ko, yung baka mataranta lang yung mga tao. Eh, ba't hindi nyo sinabi na nandun pala kayo nung unang araw, hindi lang kayo lumabas ng opisina? Ah, uh, ma'am, hindi po ako napigyan nung last hearing. Nabanggit ko na nandun ako. If you will check the transcript. I was there, I mentioned that. But then, it was noticed in passing. You know? Okay. Uh, nandudun ho yan. Uh, sana ho nandudun sa transcript yan. Pero, Secretary, ito po yung sinasabi din na ating uh, ni Senator JB. Ano? Yung unang crisis management team, bakit hindi sinama ang mga airline representatives? Uh, siguro ho, Madam, para technical na yan at dato ng mm -hmm. operasyon. Nandun ba kayo sa crisis management meeting? Uh, wala po. Kasi ang mga miyembro ho dan ay is, is, is specified in position and by name. O, Kung si maaari lang po, Madam Chair, si, uh, si ipasa ko lang yung mga kwan para mabigay yung mga posisyon at pangalan ng tao na involved dun sa crisis management. GM, sino po yung representative ng airline dun sa crisis management? At the time of the incident, uh, no one came around. Uh, but I was in touch with them, telling them of what's going on. No, what, no, but no one volunteered to come over. Because you are saying that it should have been on a voluntary basis? Is that... uh, maybe yes, maybe no. But the point there is, when I was still with the airline, uh, I normally go to the site and nobody stops me. In the same manner, these airlines were also welcome to be there. But you should have called them to be there, right? Whether um, they liked may, it yeah, or maybe not. Yeah, maybe hindsight, I'm, I was wrong at that time that I did not call them. But, uh, but it, I mean, you know what, sir, I, we didn't expect, well, we should have probably anticipated it, but we'll never really know um, until it happens um, sometimes. Okay? So moving forward, I think now it should not be on a voluntary basis. It should be more on who is your point person. Okay. Let's let's go. Let let's be a little bit more specific now. Let's say Philippine Airlines and Cebu Pacific. If there was an incident like this, who would you send to join Jim Monreal in the crisis management meeting? Madam Chair, we have a point person for airports. Who is that? Mr. Ed Nubilias. He is the one who is responsible for the meeting. Okay. How about Philippine Airlines? Who would you send? Uh, Madam Chairman, we do have also our crisis management team, but for purposes of uh, going to ground zero, uh, our safety department, in fact, at that time, we, I, I was informed by our safety department that they wanted to uh, visit the site, but uh, I think for safety reasons, they w were not allowed to. No, so. never mind about the site, because you're not in the investigating team. Yeah. I'm talking about the coordination with the airport officials so that your other flights will not be... Um, misinformed or, or affected, who would you send? 
we do have administration. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, we do have our uh, VP for Airport Operations. And who is that? Uh, Sunny Pas Meliton Pascual, who is here at this time. Yeah. Okay. So, GM Ed. If I may, uh, Madam Chairman. Yes, uh, moving forward, we'll definitely uh, impose on them to come over. However, uh, I just would like to relate my experience when I was still with the airline. Um, the airline relies on the NOTA. Admittedly, hindsight, we could have said 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Next time, if it happens, I hope it doesn't, we'll make it a standard that 24 hours will close the airport. Para ho, mabigyan ng pagpaplano, uh, mirroring from what had happened. Yun na po ang gagawin namin standard, depend, regardless of the size, the, the weight of the aircraft, ganun na po ang gagawin natin. I think mas maayos. I mean, of course, a lot will be inconvenience, no? Flights canceled, but at least if you have a time frame, they don't have to wait the airport. Sir, you were going to add something, I noticed. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, at that point in time, our mindset was to remove the aircraft as soon as possible because I know the right. ramification, the congestions, and the problems that it will entail if we will not be able to uh, remove the aircraft. That's why the initial protocol that we have in, um, suggested is almost 12 hours from midnight to 12 noon. Unfortunately, because of the worsening situation, sumamaho ang panahon, marami ho tayong consideration na nakita, kaya po ang humaba ng humaba. Admittedly, I'm taking full responsibility of making that sort of uh, omission. Right. Uh, to, uh, but at the end of the day, at the back of my mind, I want that aircraft to be out of the runway. Correct. So there, there you know, I, I, respect, uh, I respect that and I appreciate your situation, sir. Uh, nobody really can fully know the best uh, thing to do at that particular time. That's why we have to prepare ahead of time. But having been, uh, you know, it's nice to know that you, you work with the airlines, so I'm sure your relations, hopefully with them, would be easier, more tenable, better. But um, can you include that, what you mentioned, um, in your suggestion on how to make you more responsive in the, in the future. There are many facets to this. You have the retrieval, and then you have customer service. You have security. Uh, you also have the immigration part. So all of these things, maybe you can have a point person, just like Secretary Tugade has um, under Secretary Tamayo for, for air uh, concerns, for aviation concerns, which will bring me to my next question to Yusek Tamayo, nag-announce po kasi na pumayag ang DOTR na magkaroon ng fuel surcharge ngayon. So dahil sa presyo ng crudo, tataas ang presyo. Mr. Chairman, Secretary. Okay, so, so you studied it. Yes, ma'am. And your findings would be to allow them to have the surcharge. We're not, we're not saying it's right or wrong. I, I, we just want to understand that, number one, that you approved it, and number two, from the airlines themselves, Tell us how much more passengers will have to pay with this surcharge. So, sir, please answer the first one. Did you approve it? Uh, as far as the OTR is concerned, we allow the CAB board to approve the imposition of the fuel surcharge. So it is the board of CAB that will give the final say. Okay, so CAB. Magkano po madadagdag sa pamasahe ng ating mga pasahero? Oh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. Yung pong dagdag sa pasahe, ang kabilin-bilin na po sa amin ni Secretary ay eh, gumawa ng matrix para po sa ganun, hindi po maging arbitrary yung pagdadagdag ng surcharge at kung sakali pong bumaba sila, automatic pong matatanggal o bababa in accordance with the prevailing maps yung pong main of plots of Singapore. Pinag-aralan din po namin yung mga surcharge sa ibang bansa sa Japan, sapagat ito po isang global practice na. So, ang ating pong protection sa mga mananakay ay upang magkaroon ng talagang uh, computasyon. Meron po tayong matrix na talagang ginawa, kaya matagal po bago namin na-aprobahan ito. Na pag, kasi po, ang dating nung 2014 po, uh, tinanggal po natin ang fuel surcharge, nang dumating, bumaba po ng bumaba ang fuel sa 67% uh, dollars per barrel, US dollars. Ngayon po, nasa 90 na po ang uh, per barrel ng crudo, ah, ng uh, aviation fuel. 
Kung kaya po uh, ang mga airlines natin nag-apply na po ng surcharge at yung pong ibang mga airlines na lumilipad dito galing sa ibang bansa, meron na po silang surcharge na in-approve ng kanilang home state. So, so teka muna so, mm. may matrix, okay? So, pinayagan nyo na. Ngayon ba ay ini-impose na ng airlines itong surcharge? Wala pa. Ay, ini-impose na ninyo? Uh, Madam Chair, wala pa po ngayong imposition ng uh, Cebu Pacific. Wala pa. Wala pa Kaya lang kayo mag-uumpisa. Uh, actually, uh, ang mga airlines po, ang pagkakaalam ko, mag-a-apply pa lang po ng, uh, magsasubmit pa lang po ng revise uh, petition. Kasi before po, Madam Chair, nag-file kami, pero hindi po yung inaksyon na ng CAB, gumawa po sila, pinag-aralan po nila ng mabuti, ng DOTR, at uh, ngayon po ay may nagpasa sila ng resolusyon at base po sa matrix na uh, inaprubahan ng CAB Board ng DOTR, doon po namin na uh, ibabase po ang aming mga aplikasyon. Oh, so ganito. Paano niya dinedetermina kung magkano ang itataas? Is it in, in proportion to the amount of, is it a percentage of the ticket price? Or is it a flat rate? Let's say, is it a flat rate of 100 pesos or more per passenger? How do you determine it? Madam Chair, yung pong resolution ng, uh, C ng CAB Board, meron pong matrix, meron pong uh, distansya. Say, ang distansya po ng isang ruta is mula isa hanggang dalawang daang kilometro, dalawang daang mahigit hanggang tatlong daan, meron pong matrix doon. So, 200 to 300 pesos? Uh, may, hindi po. Meron uh -huh. pong, depende po sa distansya ng uh, sa ruta, meron pong naka-assign na uh, specific fuel source. So, bigyan mo ako ng idea. Kunyari, dito papuntang papuntang Cebu, magkano? Uh, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, uh, hinati-hati po namin sa distansya, alibawa po yung distansya, eh, hindi lalampas ng 200 kilometers. Ang pagkakatanda ko po doon sa first column namin ng matrix, 80 pesos hanggang 100 per, per flight. Uh, tapos po, merong 200 to 400 uh, kilometers ang distansya, merong hanggang 600, at meron pong yung sa mga long haul na. Yung pong, kaya po, halimbawa, yung 200 kilometers po ang distansya, nakalam po doon yung mga ruta. Marami po yun kung ano na yung mga ruta na nasa ilalim ng ganong distansya. So, nasa 80 pesos yun. Opo, something niyo. like that Yung po. Cebu ba, gano'ng kalayo? Ilang kilometro yan? Doon ba yan sa 200? Hindi. Ang Cebu po kasi is about 600, 587 so kilometers So, you're talking about po another yan. 240 pesos of fuel surcharge? More or less po. Uh, okay, so this is my question. You suspended it apparently in 2014 when the price of uh, per barrel was uh, low. Now, are you saying... Pag bumaba uli ang presyo ng krudo, isuspend niyo uli ito. Po, nakalagay po sa Magkano matrix ang, natin. ang ideal uh, para masuspend? Pag bumaba po ang uh, krudo, ang, kero, ang kerosene, aviation fuel, from the current 90, may corresponding na baba po yun. Meron pong per liter na, na presyo na nakalagay doon sa matrix natin. Bababa po siya accordingly at pag dumating po sa threshold ng 60, ginawa po namin 70. Pag bumaba ng 70, Tanggal na po ang uh, fuel surcharge. Pero sinasabi nyo ngayon, magkano na per barrel? 90 po. And so, nandito yung ating Secretary of Finance. Sir, sa train po, di ba mayroong automatic suspension pagka $80 per barrel yung presyo sa merkado? Eh, nasa 90 na po. So, anong mangyayari? Baka wala ito sa committee, ano natin. But, out of curiosity, sir. I think the law says, uh, when the price of Dubai crude goes to 90, uh, there will be a suspension of the increase in the fuel, in the fuel tax. Uh, this is uh, Avgas, ma'am. This is not uh, the, the one he's referring to is Kerosene. the price of Avgas. Um, it's not the price of Dubai crude. Okay, so Dubai crude now is how much per barrel? I don't know what it is today, ma'am, but it is uh, in the... I think it's about seventy dollars. Would you know? Okay. I, I I did check it. What what the price price is today or last Friday? I can give it to you in a few minutes. Okay, thank you, sir. So now, uh, Kaa, you said that by next week, hopefully, you will have your international counterpart uh, representatives present for your meeting, and you said part of your investigation will involve interviewing the pilot. Am I correct? 
the pilot of Shaman. That is that is correct. Um, I-verify ho namin yung nakita namin sa flight data recorder at saka sa sinabi nila kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin noon. Okay. Ngayon, nakaalis na yung piloto. Ay, hindi, hindi naman ako nagdududa na hindi, yeah, ano, pero uh, I would like to ask Shaman Airlines, if there's a need to interview the pilot here in the Philippines, the pilot of that uh, flight, uh, are you willing to let the pilot join the investigation and, and send him back here to the Philippines? Uh, Madam Chair, the Shaman Airlines has uh, repeatedly assured not just the Honorable Committee, but the CAAP, that they will fully cooperate with the investigation. So I would expect that the pilot would be available, uh, whether uh, physically or perhaps uh, electronically via video conference or uh, teleconference for a possible interview by the investigative committee. And when do you plan to remit uh, the penalties uh, that you incurred? Uh, supposedly, Mr. Monreal, uh, GM Monreal, you said, Nasa 70 plus million na, no? Um, based on our arrangement uh, last week, nagtanong po sila at humingi po sila ng listahan ng anang kanang kabayaran. At uh, ang pagkakaalam ko po, uh, by September 13 to 14, may plano silang pumunta rito para isettle muna po yung, yung initial. And then meron pa pag-uusap pagdating po ng chairman within this week ay pag-uusapan namin yung pinal, yung karagdagang uh, uh, bills so, na dapat nilang bayaran. Sige. So, please inform the committee of the schedule if they've already complied with that or if there are any developments with regards to that. Um, before we go to airport modernization, anything else that we need to add here and cover? Okay. Go ahead. Airport modernization. Um, Let's begin by saying uh, the following things, no? Yung capacity ng yung capacity ng airport natin ay 31 million at least yung naiya, correct? Oh, kasi ito ito yung nakuha ko to kay uh, Mr. Yapet at din sa Management Association of the Philippines. He has a quite a good article also on this. So 31 million now this is at 2017, nasa 42.5 na ang ating mga pasayero dito. And we are growing at around 6% per year. Ilan? Ilan percent po? Ang um, 3, 3 to 4%. Ah, 3, 3 to 4%. Okay. Now, another thing that was also mentioned is the utilization of the Subic Airport. Okay, uh, when uh, Senator Gordon mentioned this, they can already accommodate 747s. They can accommodate that, correct? Currently, probably uh, CAP can uh, validate that. Uh. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Somebody from CAP. Oh, okay, later on. Let, let me just go through the facts here. So you have, ah, oh, okay, our Undersecretary of uh, Aviation, sir. Uh, to the Chairman. Uh, as far as uh, the Subic Airport is concerned, CAP is helping them out, bring the airport back to uh, international standard. And uh, in fact, so we... It isn't yet. Uh, because there are some deficiencies yet as of now. Uh, the navigational aids will have to do flight checks. In fact, we had to... Uh, uh, CAAP had to lend communication equipment as far as the tower is concerned. So how, how, can, we, how can we rush that and, and, and make it compliant? What, what's the issue? Is it... Uh, the availability of those equipment, or is it the money? Uh, through the chairman, uh, we have a timeline already as far as SUVIC is concerned. Uh, we were made to understand that funding is not an issue. Okay. Uh, SBMA has the funds for it, and uh, they showed us a list of equipments that they wanted to buy, and we went through it and told them what they needed immediately and what were not necessary to get so big up to standard. So hopefully, if, uh, we, based on our ta uh, timetable, we're looking about first or second quarter of next year to get it back to international standards. First or second quarter, okay. Um, I think the, the prime, con obviously what we need are 
the, the prime consideration of Clark and Subic is really the distance to the, the met metro area. So the connecting modes of transportation, rail, etc., have to be uh, simultaneous with the development of that. So going back to, to that, who will be able to answer the DOTR on the connectivity of Clark to Metro Manila? Uh, Madam Chair, the uh, connectivity of Clark to Man Manila will be uh, created by what we call a rail system. Uh, this is rail system will be from Tutuban to Malolos, Malolos to Angeles, Angeles inward to Clark Airport. The uh, Malolos, Tutuban Malolos, uh, is expected to be bidded out already before the end of this year. It is targeted to be completed by, uh, uh, by in two and a half to three years, the Malolos portion. The complete railway system, which is from Tutuban, Malolos, Malolos to Angeles, Angeles, Angeles to the airport, will be completed by 2022. Uh, there is also a rail system that is connected, that will be connecting uh, Clark and, uh, and Subic. This is Cargoman, so that the advantage of uh, Subic, which is the seaport, can be complemented by the advantage of airport in Clark. Uh, in that way, you enhance what we call a logistics hub, an economic zone that is predicated on logistics hub. Lahat ito makakatugma-tugma sa panahon ng ang termino bago matapos ang termino ng ating Pangulo in place ho yung improvement sa Clark at Clark Airport at in place na ho yung connectivity from Clark to uh, Angeles, Angeles to the uh, Clark Airport. Meron po kaming pinag-uusapan ng mga proponent na kung saan tinitignan ho namin yung bang tinatawag na partial operability. Kasi ho, ang target ho noon, bago magamit yung kabuuan, antayin matapos yung kabuuan. Ang tinitignan ho namin, kung pwede nang gamitin na limbawa ho, kung matatapos yung uh, tutuban malolos, huwag mo nang antayin matapos yung buong kabuuan, gamitin mo na muna yung uh, portion ng uh, uh, Tutuban Malolos. So, we are also working on the basis of partial operability. Ito po yung relasyon ng RILES, sistemang RILES, na iuugma namin sa uh, airport uh, improvement sa Clark. Pero ibibit pa lang, ano? Pero at least meron ka naman timeline. Um, kaya lang po, siguro dumako tayo. May tatlo kasing bagay na kailangan para ang ating mga paliparan ay maging maayos. Una, uh, binabanggit nga yung infrastruktura. Pangalawa, teknolohiya. Pangatlo, yung pagmamanage mismo. So pag sinabi natin infrastruktura, obviously kulang na kulang tayo ngayon dahil kailangan siguro tayo magpatayo pa ng mga uh, bagong paliparan o magdagdag ng runway. Pero yung teknolohiya, yung CNS ATM system, yung mga radars na medyo dumadami na rin yung mga nitrated natin dahil din sa inyong inisyatibo, pero kailangan pang dagdagan. Ngayon, dumako tayo siguro dito sa mga katanungan habang nandito si Secretary Dominguez, dahil Secretary Dominguez ay hinihila sa lahat ng mga iba't ibang mga pagpupulo. Ngayon na nandito siya sa atin. Um, Secretary Dominguez, yung tanong natin, ano, maraming mga usap-usapan sa sa pagkakaroon ng mga bagong airport. Halimbawa, yung isa doon, sa huli naming pagdinig, ang pinag-usapan ay yung proposal ng airport sa Bulacan. At no cost to the government, um, malaking bagay ito sapagkat sabi, hanggang apat na runway ang malalagay dyan. Meron ng expandable to six yata or two expandable to four. Basta malaki magkakaroon ng loop in terms of connectivity uh, ang transportation ng San Miguel. Again, at no cost to us. Pumasa na po sa NEDA, pero ang pinakahuling update po ay dadaan pa rin po sa DOF. Ang huling uh, basa ko ngayon na report 
um, itong San Miguel Corporation ay nakikipag-usap na kasama ng um, mga magagaling na magbibigay ng advice. I think yung isa doon ay isang financial institution at ang isa naman ay uh, sanay katulad ng Sumitoma. Sumut Sumitomo. So, Secretary Dominguez, ano po ba yung dahilan kung bakit hindi pa rin nadidesisyonan ito sa inyong tanggapan? Thank you for inviting us to, to today's Senate hearing, Your Honors, and for giving us an opportunity to answer your questions on the Department of Finances involvement in the approval of the airport projects. For us, the message in the last hearing and today also is clear. The government should accelerate the approval and implementation of airport proposals to ensure that tourists and our Kababayans do not suffer an incident similar to the Shaman Air should the is an incident incident similar to the Shaman Air mishap occur. On the call of this honorable committee for government to fast track the implementation of airport proposals, we completely agree. We understand that as early as 2011, a JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency report, was already released discussing the problems of NAIA's capacity, which incidentally was not acted upon by the past administration. One of the first acts of this administration was to rehabilitate, to begin the rehabilitation of the Clark International Airport to partially address the NAIA capacity problem. We were the first ones to take action. However, we cannot simply wave the magic wand and fix the problem overnight. This is why we at the DOF were puzzled when we heard that we were being invited today by the Honorable Chairperson to this committee to a hearing on the modernization and expansion of airports. In the last meeting, uh, it was stated that the DOF needs to answer why they are hampering or delaying the approval of these projects. Before we share this with the committee, our role in the approval of the airport projects, let us first go back to the time the Bulacan International Airport proposal was presented. In a meeting in January 2018, the following questions came to our mind. First, how will the Bulacan Airport affect the Clark International Airport given the government's investment in Clark? Your Honors, all airport projects are real estate projects. The real estate value of the new Clark City is currently 14 billion US dollars and government has committed an additional 12 billion pesos. We wanted to know how the Bulacan Airport which is just 25 kilometers away from Clark, will affect the value of the new Clark City, which is, by the way, the property of the Filipino people. Second, how will the Bulacan International Airport affect the traffic in the area? Do we need additional lanes in the North Luzon Expressway to be constructed? Do we need to change the alignment of the proposed rail system to Clark? Third, who is the proponent and what is its actual financial capability? We wanted to know whether the proponent, San Miguel Holdings Corporation, actually had the financial capacity to undertake the project. Initially, the Department of Transportation reported that San Miguel Holdings had a total equity of 60 billion pesos in 2016. Considering the usual financial mix of 70-30, 70% debt and 30% equity in a PPP project, the construction of the Bulacan Airport will require San Miguel Holdings to infuse around 200 billion pesos in equity, which we are not sure is going to happen. In order to answer these questions, among others, a second meeting was required. In April of 2018, the project was approved by the NEDA board. As a condition for the approval, we were required to submit our inputs. Even though we thought it was not proper for us to submit our comments as the implementing rules and regulations of Republic Act number 
6957 or the BOT law provides that the DOF shall review the draft contract once negotiations are completed. Nevertheless, we, we compiled the issues discussed at the NEDA, ICC, and board meetings. Contrary to statements made in the last hearing, we guarantee that there were no new comments added that were not already discussed before the NEDA board approval. We take this opportunity to categorically, categorically say we have not caused the delay in the Bulacan Airport. As a matter of fact, we are even providing assistance to accelerate the approval and implementation of the project. One of the hope, helpful suggestions we made to the DOTR was to require the execution of a joint and several liability agreement which would make San Miguel Corporation, the parent company, stand behind San Miguel Holdings, the private proponent, which is financially at this point incapable of undertaking a 700 billion peso project. However, in page five, item P of the draft minutes of the meeting as of April 25, 2018, six NEDA board meeting, a representative from the Office of the President stated that, I quote, the financial cap capacity of the proponent corporation should be the one evaluated and not the financial capacity of the mother company backing the proponent corporation, unquote. That's not my comment, ma'am. That is somebody else's. As regards the DOF's role in the approval process of airport projects, Book 4, Title 2, Chapter 1, Section 1 of Executive Order Number U292, Series of 1987, or the Administrative Code, provides that the mandate of our department is to ensure the sound and efficient management of financial resources of the government. It is my responsibility to not only to look after all government assets, but also to manage our contingent liability, which for the information of this body is estimated now to be at least 309 billion pesos as of 2018 for PPP projects. Meticulous evaluation is necessary since several in, in several instances projects were approved in the past by the NEDA board, which were more profit profitable than projections during the appraisal stage. Let me give a concrete example. The Mactan Cebu International Airport is actually earning more profits than projected. In 2017, it registered a net income of 1.1 billion pesos. This is 48% higher than the 752 billion pesos forecasted in the financial model of the project. This indicates that the actual returns of the concessionaire would be significantly larger than what was originally estimated. And yet, government still made the commitment that there will be no other competing airports in Mactan and Cebu. Now, should the government later on want to build a new airport in the area to serve OFWs and other tourists, we would be required to reimburse not just market value of the infrastructure assets, but also all the future profits of the commercial business until the end of the concession. This means that we would have to reimburse the concessionaire in Mactan around 20 billion pesos just to build another airport. While 309 billion pesos is an alarming number, what is more worrying to us are the type of commitments we guarantee. Let me give you another example. There are potential claims by water concessionaires against the government estimated at 80 billion pesos just because the performance undertaken, which was executed by a former DOF secretary, guaranteeing that the government will not interfere or question water utility rates. Moreover, as I mentioned in the Mactani, Cebu International Airport Concession Agreement, the government committed that if it causes to operate any international or domestic airport in the Mactan and Cebu Islands, it is considered the grantor in default, that's the government, making us liability for 
liable for term termination payments. Essentially, it will cost us a tremendous amount of money to build a new airport in these areas, even if there is an unexpected increase in passenger demand. Your Honors, these examples emphasize that the actions we do and the documents we sign have ripple effects on the next generations. The burden is upon my office to ensure that future generations do not suffer consequences from poor decisions of previous government. As Book 4, Title 2, Chapter 1, Section 2 of the Administrative Code, and as reiterated in the Department of Justice Opinion Number 61, Series of 2004, and 13 Series, of 2013 states that the issuance of performance undertaking is within the dis discretionary power of the DOF, it being mandated by law to be primary res primarily responsible for, quote, the sound and efficient management of the financial resources of the government, its subdivisions, agencies, and instrumentalities, unquote, and, quote, for the formulation, institutionalization, admi and administration of fiscal policies in coordination with other concerned subdivisions, agencies, and instrumentalities of the uh, government, unquote. Let me ask you a question. Why don't we compare a farmer with a company investing in an airport? A farmer has no access to financing. He doesn't even own the land. In fact, he is the one who needs the subsidy or government guarantee. But these corporations who are making tremendous profit with access to banks require a guarantee even if it is their own fault that an airport is not operational. These government guarantees for force majeure and material as adverse government action can make a project bankable, but it will not turn a bad project into a good one. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Dominguez, for, the, for your inputs and clarification on, on the issues. Uh, I have a few questions Please. also, but I would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Sherwin Gachalian, who filed also a resolution on the possible expansion and modernization of our airports. So Secretary Dominguez, very quickly, for the record, you said that you it's not the Department of Finance that is actually delaying the approval of the possible Bulacan Airport, but you are a member of the NEDA board, am I correct? So as part of... Uh, the NEDA board, uh, one of the members, were you one of the ones that agreed to approve this project or did you uh, not vote for this project? As chairman of the ICC first, uh, the members of the ICC did vote for the project and uh, the NEDA board also did vote to approve the project. So and you're part of the ones that voted to approve. It, it has to be unanimous, am I correct? Uh, I believe so. So what made you approve it with all the other questions you still have in mind? Uh, you mentioned earlier you were saying something like you had to assess the impact on your investment of the government's investment in Clark, which is about $14 billion, et cetera. You also had your concerns about the possible um, uh, construction of roads and, and how it will impact traffic. And you also had your questions about and the financial viability of the investor. So with these questions, going into the vote in the NEDA board, do you still actually approve this project? Or may do you already have those questions answered? That's why you approved it. May I ask the NEDA board secretariat to quote the approval? Because I don't have it with me. The written approval, because I don't have it with me. Because, uh, okay, before, before you read yes. the, the, the actual quote, my question is this, can the NEDA board approve something but with conditions that they need to fulfill? She'll have to read okay. it, ma'am. Please go ahead and read that. And please identify yourself again, ma'am. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. I am Hazel Balyatan. I am the director of the public investment staff of NEDA, and I am also the head of the ICC core secretariat. Okay, please go ahead and read okay. it. So in our letter dated May 2, 2018 to Secretary Tugade of the DOTR, we informed that during the meeting of the April, uh, on April 25, 2018 of the NEDA board, the NEDA board approved the unsolicited proposal for the Bulacan International Airport 
as well as the reasonable rate of return, uh, after-tax weighted average cost of capital as basis for negotiation by the DOTR with the proponent. The approval is subject to the finalization of the risk allocation matrix and the draft concession agreement, consistent with ICC discussions and with inputs from the Department of Finance. So the project was approved with a total project cost uh, of about $700 billion, and it is understood that the total project cost will be borne by the proponent and with no cost requirement from the government. So that is what is written, Madam Chair, in our letter. So no wonder you really have, they, they really have to uh, provide their documentation on financial viability. Um, as you were saying, you had your doubts about this, right? Because the mother company is not necessarily liable for this. You, you, you mentioned something to that effect. When it was first submitted, yes. uh, it was submitted under uh, the San Miguel Holdings. Uh, holdings okay? Okay. So I asked them, can you please tell me what is San Miguel Holdings? Because that is the proponent. Okay. And they said the, the equity at, uh, at a certain point in time was 60, 60 billion, billion. etc. I said, how can a 60 billion peso company uh, finance, finance finance 700. a 700 billion peso project. So I said, why don't you ask the, 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 the major company of the San Miguel group to guarantee it, to uh, be a joint and several uh, proponent for this. What's and as of today, the, uh, and as of today yes. there is no such uh, undertaking yet. But um, San, San Miguel, the, the mother company, has an equity of, are you familiar with it? Uh, I assume that it is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you also mentioned, if I, if I heard you right, somebody from Malacanang said that the mother company is not the one being evaluated, but the actual proponent. So the basis should be the equity of the proponent and not the mother company. Is that? Yes, ma'am. May I ask uh, uh, the lady to quote again the uh, draft minutes of the April 25 board meeting. Okay. While she's, while you are looking for that, um, my, my question would be this. You were mentioning about the government's investment of 14 billion in Clark with an additional so many billions more and the impact this might have, um, the Pulacan Airport might have on Clark. So what are your findings? Are you already done with that? Will it actually negatively affect uh, the Clark development? Is this something that would... The concern here, ma'am, is uh, quite simple. Uh, we own about 30 or 35,000 hectares in Clark. That is owned by the Filipino nation. Okay. Uh, as uh, Secretary of Finance, my, my job is to make sure that the uh, that there are optimal returns on government assets. Uh, so, uh, if somebody is going to put an airport that that is near uh, 25 kilometers, uh, it is natural for us to see how will that affect our own investment. We are investing around 12 billion pesos right now in the Clark Airport, not con not uh, including the in the inherent value of the real estate that we own already in that area. In other words, we would like uh, the Clark uh, area to be able to lease out its land to, uh, to um, uh, companies uh, because there is an airport close by. So I wanted to know how will, how will an airport 25 kilometers away affect the value of that property. This airport so, is 25 kilometers away? That's what I believe, isn't it? Huh? No. Huh? For, uh, sorry, 65. 65. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you know what? You have, um, there, you're right. Your, your mandate, sir, is actually to make sure that government projects are financially viable and that we make some money out of it uh, for, for, for the Filipino people. But the mandate of Secretary Togad is different, in, in a way, because his is more transportation connecti connectib connectability. So my question now is this, Secretary Togad, 
with the recommendation of uh, Secretary Dominguez being concerned about Clark and the investment there, do you still think that, uh, in spite of this, we need that airport in Bulacan? Uh, number one, ma'am, let me uh, put the, my answer in perspective. Uh, the approval was read, and it said, subject to risk allocation matrix and other financial documentation. Risk allocation matrix. <laughs> this has to be addressed. We cannot at this time say yes or no, because this is being evaluated at this time. And if only to give or update this committee on what is happening, last Thursday, there was a joint meeting between the DOTR, NEDA, and DOF with the proponent precisely to address the definition of uh, uh, risk uh, allocation matrix, including, including uh, the conditionalities of joint and solidarity uh, uh, signatures and commitment, including uh, the agreements on uh, when and how and targets. This meeting was done last, only last Thursday. Uh, okay, sir, na lang, ha. Yung financial viability ng Clark. Iba muna yon. Ang isipin mo muna yung pangangailangan pagdating sa mga paliparan. At yung lapit nito sa city center sa, sa Metro Manila. Kung kayo lang, hindi niyo iniisip na meron tayong investment sa Clark, kailangan ba natin itong isa pang airport na to? Oh, kasi naninindigan ho ako Tama. sa sinasabi kong the more the merry uh, Merong maraming uh, paliparan is better for the public. Okay, Yun ho yung konseptong aking tinatahak at tinutupan. Tam tama po, and I appreciate your honesty here. Kasi actually, secretary, to our secretaries, um, Clark has much to offer, not just the airport. I mean, the, the, the space itself, the expanse of it, um, maybe the, 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 the trade zones there. So it's not just the airport, but the immediate need of more runways that are closer to Metro Manila is, is uh, definitely obvious even at, as of now. So um, w from what I hear from the finance secretary, you're still assessing the, the risks involved for Clark. So are we saying that because of the $14 billion investment in Clark, this might stop future investments of an airport that is closer to Metro Manila? Because 14 billion, uh, this is dollars, I suppose, no? 14 billion dollars for Clark uh, development, sir? I beg your pardon, ma'am? The investment in Clark is 14 billion dollars, you are saying? No, no, the, current, the current value is 14 of billion. Clark is around 14 billion dollars. dollars. But how much are we losing because every year, because of airport congestion. Malaki rin po yan, di ba? Malaki rin yung ating um, investment. Anyway, uh, just it just seems to me that considering the investment in Clark alone as something that will determine whether or not we should have another airport might be um, a little limiting. But but of course, it's, this is that's why we have this hearing here so that we can um, we we actually understand. Uh, what's going on in, in our uh, secretary's mind. Um, yeah, may I just add, ma'am, that when you are going to evaluate uh, uh, an airport, you have to figure out what it's going to cost us, the national government. Number one, uh, obviously, if it's going to negatively impact the value of our property, that's a cost. Number two, if it's going to require, because there's going to be a lot more passengers there, if it's going to require an upgrading of uh, our transportation uh, along uh, the NLEX, yeah. then it's another cost. If we're going to have to put another highway along the coast, that's another cost. So we want to see the entire cost of the project, both what we put out and what, we'll take, what, what this airport will take away from the property that we already own. I, I so those are the costs that I think it's quite. It valid, has to yes. be uh, evaluated, or else we'll not be do, be doing our job. Right, especially for the DOF, that's your mandate to make sure that uh, there's um, a return on investment that's good for the government. But how soon would you would you be able to come up with your decision 
for this and your recommendation. Kailan po? Kasi sabi ni Secretary Tugate, by the end of the year, parang something like that in our last year. Madam Chair, can I speak? Uh, yes, DOT, yeah. you said. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the issue on Clark and uh, Bulacan coexisting has been uh, thoroughly ana analyzed by the OTR. As a matter of fact, even if the, uh, in the ongoing improvements in Clark is completed, it will only serve additional about 8 million passengers. Mm. The unconstrained demand for Metro Manila, Madam Chair, in terms of air traffic is already 65 million, which means kung walang constraints yung maia, we should be doing 65 million by 2017. Now, we're doing 242 million, and, uh, and we all know it's already congested. Tanggalin mo na yung 8 million plus 4 million ng Clark, that's only 12 million. So, on lucky, hindi ka pa rin naabot na 65. Now, uh, in terms of uh, additional public infrastructure, the uh, proponent, San Miguel, proposed to construct you know, a uh, toll facility that will connect the new airport to the existing North Luzon Expressway. We undertook some traffic and uh, demand analysis, and we believe the new toll facility that will be constructed by San Miguel initially six lanes, expandable to eight lanes, you know, about eight kilometers uh, from Bulacan uh, Airport that will connect to the Marilao Junction of the North Luzon Expressway would be more than sufficient to serve the volume of traffic envisioned in the new Bulacan Airport. So, sinasabi po ninyo, actually, yung pag-aaral ng San Miguel, kasama dyan yung mga karsada that will lead to the may, airport. May require po na lang yun. May require po ng ICC yun. And uh -oh. uh, tama lang po, rationally so, no? Because uh, so, so how do you bring po, in the traffic from hmm. Metro Manila, which is mostly the origin and destination of the bulk of the traffic, to the new Bulacan Airport. Kaya ho, nirequire ho ng ICC yan na aralin yan. At ginawan ho naman ng pag-aaral yan. So, nasumitin na ninyo yan sa DOF? Na submit na po namin yan. Ano? May traffic analysis, no, which is uh, analyzing ano, the uh, model split. No? Ilan yung dadaan sa public roads, ilan yung mag expressway And that includes yung mga well-wishers ano? and then yung mga empleyado. Well Pinag-aralan ho yun, yung in and out of the Bulacan Airport. Oo, maghahatid. Oh, Siyempre, kasama sa kultura natin yun. Tama ho ah, yun. Pero, uh, yusak rin, no? so, uh, yusak kayo ng... Ano? Planning po, planning. Planning, okay. So, sa inyo po, personal ninyong nire-recommend na to, sa tinyo mga kabute. Kasi tama yung sinabi ninyo, kahit na fully utilized ang Clark, maayos, makaka makakabawas lang yan ng mga... 8 million passengers, di ba? Mga maximum 12, sir. Ma'am. Maximum 12? Kasi there is an existing terminal now, eh, about 3, 3 and a half million uh, passenger capacity. So, yung expansion po, mga 8 million. So, mga 11 oh. or 12 million. So, may million. kulang pa talaga tayo na ilan, di ba? Well, malaki talaga yung kakulangan, Madam Chair. As I said, ano, yung unconstrained demand, kung wala lang ho sanang constrain yung ating Manila International oh. Airport, ano, yung naiya, Yung pag-aaral ho ng 2011 na binanggit po ni Secretary Dominguez, dapat ho meron na tayong kinukuwang 65 million sa region pa lang po yun. Pero because of the constraint, congested na tayo at 42 million in Naiya. And Clark is picking up already, no? almost 2 million, 2.5 million na po yung Clark, ano? from a very low, less than a million about a few years back. So, 65 million yung ating congestion ngayon. Ay, yung, hindi, yung, hindi. yun po dapat ang traffic na nakukuha ng Manila, no? kung so, wala kong constraint. Yun so, po yung sinasabi ko na, na walang, walang constraint. Ibig sabihin, kung kaya sana nung capacity natin yung 65 million, meron dapat na tayo nakuhang merkado eh, no, na 65 so, million passengers per ano, no? both international and domestic. So parang kulang tayo, eh, eh, yung madadagdag lang sa Clark is about 8 million. Ako. Yan po idadagdag ng Clark. Oh, so, eh, 23 million na yung parang kulang natin. So, talagang kailangan natin ng, ng isa pa. Meron din isang iniisip na doon naman sa Sangli. Pero, ano ba sa inyo, uh, Secretary Tugade, ano bang, para sa akin, ano, parang mas detalyado at maayos itong proposal na ng, sa Bulacan. Pero ano naman itong sa Sangli? Sino naman ang proponent dito? Uh, nabangkit ko na po nung nakarang meeting. Meron hong... Uh, government, tinatawag na government to government uh, proposal ang province of Cavite sa DOTR na kung saan gusto nilang i-rehabilitate at i-improve 
yung sangli. Wala pa hong detalye dyan na pagkakasunduan. Pag-uusap pa lang yan. Uh, importante hong magkaroon ng usapan yung government to government kasi ho, sa atin panukala, prioridad ho yung may government to government. Okay. Pero so, sa ganito, um, just to to make things clear, no? nasubmit na ninyo sa DOF yung findings ninyo doon sa pag-aaral ninyo ng capacity ng airport, kung anong kailangan natin, yung mga connectivity sa kalsada. Am I correct, uh, Mr. Sa, Renoso? Sa ICC po. Sa ICC. sa ICC. Hindi po sa DOF. Sa Investment Coordination Committee po, the NEDA board. Okay, so ICC, you, you've received their recommendation? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. In fact, this information was submitted in considered when we were in this, uh, discussing the Bulacan International. Okay, so Secretary Dominguez, um, I'm sure you're um, swamped with a lot of other things, but more or less, when, when would you be able to come up with your recommendation? Ma'am, by law, I have to come up with the recommendation after the negotiations. That is the requirement of law. So you have to negotiate first. Who will negotiate? The OTR will have yes, to negotiate with uh, yes, San Miguel Holdings. Yes. Um, we, we are not part of the negotiating team because it's not correct. We are going to be the ones to review the, en the entire uh, proposal at the end of their negotiation. So it's not right that we are also part of the negotiating team. Okay, but, but sir, here's the thing. Uh, it's part of the negotiation is how um, they're, they're going to say how they're not going to negatively impact uh, the value of our investment in Clark. They already have the, the, all the NEDA comments, mm -hmm. which, incidentally, uh, even though it's not required of us, we actually summarized it uh, for the benefit of the DOTR. Uh, we summarized all the discussions uh, in the NEDA board and all the comments and all the minutes. So they have the, those are their guidelines. Okay, so let, can I ask you, what weighs heavily on, on you, sir? I beg your investment. pardon. What would we? What would? Um, what is of a paramount concern for you? Our investment in Clark or the need to expand our airport? The contingent. The, the the final cost of the airport, including our contingent liabilities, will be what will weigh heavily on us. The con final cost to us, ma'am. There is no such thing as free. I understand. Uh, no free lunch. When, when okay. they say, oh, no cost to the government, ma'am, that is not true. That is simply not true. As I mentioned in uh, the other uh, PPP agreements, we have contingent liabilities there. So our role is to make sure, number one, that the contingent liabilities are manageable, that they are reasonable, and that at no point is there going to be a moral hazard that absolutely that the uh, proponent one day will just say oh i quit anyway i'm going to get paid no, i mean I... and there is no uh, uh breach of that principle that nobody enriches himself uh in a contract well so, I, I i respect that and yes. I, and i'm i'm reassured that that's your mindset definitely uh, the previous contracts government has entered into like uh, the MRT situation, uh, we're in a bind because of that. So I appreciate that you're doing that, sir. Thank you. But um, there are also added benefits to the government. For example, uh, we may be spending a little here, but the return, uh, more tourists would want to come here because of the convenience. Um, real estate around Bulacan, if developed properly and zoning is followed, uh, will actually increase. So. There the, there's the added value also of uh, that particular investment. Secretary uh, Well said, ma'am. In fact, uh, uh, alisin ko lang ho yung uh, perception na uh, yung position ng Department of Finance is uh, exclusive sa position or contradictory to our position. That's why we are having this meeting for one in this committee hearing, and we will be meeting, and we are already meeting with the proponent, with the Department of Finance, so that the balancing and 
reconciling points will will have to be met and recognized. Sir, but it, how how would you recon how would you reconcile this, Secretary Dominguez? Because you were saying that the proponent is the one that will be evaluated, and as you were saying, their equity might not be enough for the 700 billion investment. Um, isn't that uh, your pronouncement saying this? Uh, isn't that already a huge factor that your decision might be to the negative? No, ma'am. I even suggested what they can do. I suggested that they come into uh, that uh, the major corporation come into a uh, guarantee, joint yeah. and several liability. I suggested that. Okay, so who's against it? Were you going to read? Um, I think initially somebody from Malacanang. Um, did not, he still didn't find it. Okay. Uh, no, no, thank you. I mean, Secretary Dominguez, I, I can totally, um, I, well, I, as I was saying, I am reassured that also that's your mindset. Ayaw natin niloloko talaga tayo ng mas kinasino at yayaman sa paghihirap ng ating mga kababayan. Pero sa nakikita naman natin, basta merong reputasyon at uh, maayos nga yung kontrata, eh, kung babantayan naman ninyo sa tingin ko, Maging okay. Dapat talaga stricto rin eh. I, I can see how it is. Kaya lang, yung time frame din natin, iniisip din namin na sana nga matapos na ito maaprubahan or kung hindi maaprubahan, ay makahanap ka agad ng ma ibang... Yeah, there's a deadline in the negotiations, ma'am. I think it's 80 days. 80 And then days. they have to uh, do a Swiss challenge. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so did you find it, ma'am? Yes, Madam Chair, with regard to the earlier uh, statement that there is an OP person from OP, so in our minutes, uh, Deputy Executive Secretary Ong, uh, Michael Ong, uh, stated that in the Swiss challenge, the financial capacity of the proponent corporation should be the one evaluated and not the financial capacity of the mother company backing these corporations. Okay, uh, Secretary Ong is... Uh, with uh, Deputy Executive Secretary for uh, for uh, of the OP of the OP. So there's a way around this, Secretary Dominguez. You were saying uh, I suggested something, uh, but uh, to this date I don't know. In fact, if uh, that uh, undertaking has been submitted, as uh, oh, yeah, uh, Mr. Reynoso, yeah. you said. Yeah, ma'am, just to give you an update, we conveyed that to the proponent, you know, that uh, the parent company must uh, undertake a joint and several liability agreement with the uh, proponent uh, corporation, San Miguel Holdings. And they agreed. But they agreed. But uh, okay. prior to that, you know, we, there were certain issues, major issues that they need to uh, be cleared upon. That's why we called that meeting last Thursday, Madam Chair, and uh, we're glad to report that we have almost agreed in principle on these major issues. And the proponent, San Miguel Holdings and San Miguel Corporation, committed to submit the revised draft concession agreement by Friday of this week, after which we will convene again the week after to discuss the new submissions and hopefully, as the uh, chair and the uh, members of the committee wish, we will accelerate the, uh, the uh, conclusion of the process. As a matter of fact, simultaneously with this, Madam Chair, members of the committee, we are already preparing the uh, terms of reference and the tender documents for the Swiss challenge. Okay, But so, so ganito yun, di ba sabi ni Secretary Dominguez, yes, 80 days, tapos magsi-Swiss challenge. Um, so, kailan matatapos to, yung final decision ninyo? At, yeah. as, as soon as we receive the uh, revised concession agreement by Friday, Madam Chair, as I said, we will convene the week after. And we hope we will be able to complete the entire process before the year ends. I mean, at least we can advertise for the no, uh, Swiss that challenge. That includes already the timeline of the DOF? Kasi di ba, dapat hinihintay pa ninyo yung... Hindi naman kailangan hintayan. Uh, ang, ang proseso po, ma'am, ano, we, we intend to conclude the negotiations, no? The basic negotiations. Ang negotiations po kasi ah, hindi lang... Ah, and they will evaluate it. Yes, that's okay. right. Because we and have to we submit... Have days, now so we have to issue first, no? A okay. certificate of successful negotiation to be signed by uh, the uh, proponent, uh, age, the proponent corporation and the DOTR and then submit it to the NEDA for review, final review, before we even... Uh, publish the invitation for the Swiss challenge, Madam Chair. Okay, so you're saying, but at the end of the year, you're done, and then uh, that's when you're going to be 
looking at for looking at the their findings for your comments is that is that correct secretary dominguez well they can finish it as soon as they can uh, i don't think it should take until the end of the year i think that is what is the prescription of the law but they can finish it sooner so can you finish it sooner uh, what we uh, what we are saying at this time, ma Madam Chairman, is we'll finish the entire process, including the Swiss challenge. This is the target and the timeline which we have set to ourselves before the end of this year. Uh, and already there are indications that uh, the agreement can be accelerated because of uh, certain agreement in principle on some major issue, one of which is the joint and uh, solidarity uh, agreements of the parent company. So the Swiss, including the Swiss challenge by the end of this year? Uh, yes, ma'am. And then, oh, you know, that, that. what's the next step? Uh, pag uh, nanalo ho yung proponent, di mag-start na ho sila ng construction. Ah, so, so ganun ka pinag- uh, Yung review ho ng uh, DOF is before the Swiss challenge. Is it correct. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Uh -huh. oh, so, yes. Ang, ang proseso po, ma'am, pag may challenger po, no, titignan namin yung offer ng challenger. If the challenge, the proposed challenge proposal is better than the original proponent, we will have to go back to the proponent. Ano no, ba yan? Open, them... close bidding yan, di ba? Okay. Open po to, open. Open, na. open po so, to. Pag, pag we will advertise anybody oh. who wanted to challenge the unsolicited proposal is welcome to submit a counter proposal, no? But based on the same terms and parameters, no? Kung wala pong nag-submit, walang sumali, we will just uh, issue the notice of award and then uh, sign the necessary documentations for the issuance of the notice to proceed. And for the uh, proponent to immediately comply with the uh, terms of the financial clause and submit to government the terms of the agreement. Yung sa Krenoso, busy kasi si Secretary Tugade. Bigay mo na lang sa akin, sa amin dito, yung timeline ninyo ha. Uh, with the approval, of course, of the secretary, just uh, but um, the vice chair now will continue yes, uh, this questioning. Chair, are we made to understand that? Siguro kasi marami tayong options pa, no? Sek Tugade, um, as you mentioned, the more the merrier, para kung ano mauna. Pero sa ngayon, at least yung, yung, yung short term, improvement of the NAIA, whatever we have, di ba? Um, and then the medium term, Clark is already in the... Uh, um, in process, no? In construction of that new terminal. So, do po sa long term. So among the three options that uh, that we still have, the Sangli, Naiya expansion, the second runway, which is medio matagal-tagal. So yung pung sa San Miguel na bulakan, um, are we made to an, uh, parang uh, in our understanding sa sa sinasabi ni si Yusek Ruben Reynoso, is this the most viable right now? Kasi uh, Yusek Ruben, do po sa tatung long term, no? Yung medium term yung Clark, anjan na po yon. It's under. Uh, it's already underway, no? Yung pong medium-term uh, solution natin for na iya uh, um, airport. Uh, so, ano po, ano, yung bulakan-bulakan uh, by San Miguel, would, uh, among the three options, uh, sa tingin nyo, ito na po yung pinaka-viable. Tama po yun, Mr. Chair. Uh, Advance na po itong bulakan-bulakan because uh, most of the documentations have been complied with. The approval process, you know, the most of the requirements for the approval process have been concluded. And we're now in the process of the uh, calling for comparable uh, proposals. So among the three, no, yung sangli na proposal, medyo to, wala pa dahil yeah, to that's, government that's, to government. That's Itong naiya second runway, wala pa rin yung pag-expropriate ng Merville. Uh, uh, wa wala, wala hong uh, naiya second runway. Wala na po yan. Uh, ang meron ho, naiya rehabilitation and improvement, which uh, the consortium of seven has made an unsolicited proposal. Having said that, and target din ho namin matapos yung Swiss challenge sa NAIA is by the end of this year. I'm very glad to hear uh, that from Secretary Tugade and uh, the presence of our uh, DOF Secretary as well because this has been long overdue. Ang sigo, uh, Sek Tugade, Sek Tugade, siguro ano lang, we decide hopefully this year talagang kung saan na talagang direction natin. I, I, would, think, I would say that uh, what really happened, everybody agrees, it's an eye-opener, that indeed, uh, na IES ka over capacity will be will remain a problem, and we really have to move. So at least we already can see that there is a direction. At uh, um, yung sa sinabi ni Yusek uh, Reynoso, at least yung itong isang option na long term yung bulakan is already moving. 
Tama ba? Uh, ito lang ang gumagalaw among the other options. Yung Secretary Rinoso, ito lang yung Tama po meron kayong kausapin. Between, kayo uh, between yung Bulacan Ho at saka Sangli, uh, yung Bulacan Ho yung gumagalaw. Well, that's that's very good uh, good news indeed to hear. Um, as I mentioned the last um, last hearing, we are 20, probably now 25, 30 years behind, so we have a lot of catching up to do. So, I get. Uh, Nalala ko na ko 1998 when uh, panahon pa ni President Erap 20 years ago. That was already Clark was already being uh, mentioned as the second airport, uh, second secondary airport, no, for to na iya to have a twin airport system. Eh, ngayon po, 2018 na, two administrations has passed and nothing has happened. So, I'm hoping that we do not um, suffer from the same analysis, paralysis, sa dami ng options, sa dami ng mga pinag-uusapan. Uh, Wala akong natuloy. But I'm glad that uh, to hear from uh, Secretary Tugani, Secretary Dominguez, and uh, you, Secretary Dosso, that it, indeed, it is moving already, yung third option. Hindi lang yung Clark, no, being the secondary airport na niya, but the long term, which is the Bulacan uh, option, is already moving. Thank, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, kay Yusek Re Reynoso, Yusek, I understand that uh, the current um, roadmap for uh, the Metro Manila airports will be a four-airport strategy. We're looking at operating four airports for Metro Manila. Well, Metro Manila and the vicinity of Metro Manila. Hindi po yan yung nakalagay doon sa... Yeah. Hindi naman po yun yung nakalagay doon sa Greater Capital Region na uh, airport strategy. Now, ang sinasabi lang po namin, ano, uh, they can be, uh, they are not mutually exclusive. No, They can operate simultaneously. As what Secretary Tugali has said, we wanted to give the commuters more options no, on uh, where to travel and how to travel. Hindi naman magsasabay-sabay po yan. Eh, no? yung, yung, yung naiya improvement, no, that can be done in two to four years. No? And then yung, uh, yung, pong, ano, yung commitment po ng uh, Bulacan uh, Airport proponent as soon as they receive the notice to proceed, they can uh, get two runways immediately in three to four years. So yung Clark po na improvement ngayon ng terminal and then the subsequent uh, privatization of the operation and maintenance, we hope to get that on board by 2020 kasi yun yung schedule na completion po ng new terminal ng Clark. So sequential po yan. And uh, as the uh, traffic grows, no, we will be able to accommodate the increasing demand for uh, the greater capital region for uh, air traffic. So at one point, ho, magtatagpo-tagpo lahat ho yan eh. Correct? I mean, matatapos ho lahat yan at one point. No, all of these four airports being envisioned. Totoo po yun. What will be the capacity of those four airports? Uh, assuming NAIA is not closed, Okay, uh, the uh, capacity uh, that was uh, committed by the proponent of the NAIA improvement is about maximum 65 million. The capacity of the Bulacan Airport is 100 million. Clark right now is 12 million. The uh, initial capacity for the new Sangli International Airport is about 70 million. So, ilan hulat yun? Uh, 100 plus 6 plus 220. Mga around 250 million, uh, Mr. Chair. Hmm. Sir, Ka kailan hu, anong, anong taon magtatagpo-tagpo lahat yun? Yung matapos po lahat, per commitment, nag-uusap po tayo mga 2017. Sabihin ko lang ho, uh, kung nakumpleto na yung apat na airport, andyan ang Clark, andyan ang Subic, andyan yung Bulacan, andyan yung Naiya. Pag nangyari ho yan, we'll be in a better position to determine formally the relevance of Naiya. Will it continue to be an airport? or will it become a real estate play? Mahirap pong desisyonan ngayon yan sa NAIA kung wala pa ho yung mga airport kagaya ng Bulacan saka Sangli. 
Uh, I have to un underscore at this time, uh, sir, your honor, na pag natapos mo lahat yan, baka yung naiya ho, isa tabi as a real estate, hindi na ho airport or a primary gateway. Kasi nandiyan dyan na ho yung Sangli, nandiyan dyan na po yung uh, uh, Clark at nandiyan dyan yung Bulacan. Sir, you said kailan ho dadating tong, uh, kailan po magtatagpo tong four airports? What, what year? Yung Clark nga po, 2020 yung schedule completion yan. Yung uh, sa Bulacan po, kung uh, mabigay yung notice to proceed, 2023 or 2024 operational yan. Yung sa Sangli po, medyo yun ang sinasabi namin sa inyo na hindi pa po masyadong ano, because wala pang sinasabit na detalye yung Provincial Government of Cavite, which is actually the proponent for the Sangli International Airport. Yung naiya po, no, uh, yung first stage ng kanilang development will be completed in two years, which means if they are issued the notice to proceed by 2019, 2021, no, from, 40, from the existing capacity of 31.5, may increase nila into about 48 million. And then two years thereafter, they will increase the naiya capacity from 48 million to 65 million. So tama ba by 2022, lahat to mag-operate na? Uh, yung, except yung Bulacan po will take at least four years eh. Kasi so what, when, 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 when is that? Mga 2024? Mga 2024, sir, yung commitment nung, uh, ano, that the new airport will become operational. Sir, I think um, this committee will also request the timelines that you mentioned. Um, just for the record, uh, yung mga sinasabi mong completion, completion 2024, if all goes well, matatapos yung sa Bulacan. Um, sir, uh, Senator Gachalian, uh, in line with your questioning, because Secretary Tugade mentioned earlier that the, the viability of Naia Airport might not necessarily be needed, any, might not anymore be so if we have these other airports, correct? Ma'am, ang sinabi ko, the evaluation of the viability of Naia as an airport, the decision process becomes more fluid and flexible pag nandiyan na yung tatlong airport. But in the meantime, there is that proposal for a mega consortium uh, to rehabilitate na iya. Itutuloy ho natin yun. Kasi Itutuloy yung kontrata ho dyan is 15 years. 15 years. So uh, at patatapos ho nila yung uh, kabuhan 2 to 4 years. Uh, yun ho yun. So kasi ganito, syempre, Kung ako'y mamumuhunan sa bagay 15 years naman, so they have to be able to recoup within that 15 years, and the passengers uh, should be able to feel relief within two years or three years when they finish the rehabilitation. My question now is this. Namili na ba kayo? Pinili na ninyo yung mega consortium? Kasi alam ko, pumapasok rin yung GMR megawide uh, dyan, di ba? Nabigyan na po ng original proponent status ng DOTR at ng MIA -A yung consortium of seven para pag-usapan na at i-finalize yung concession agreement in terms of preference dun sa rehabilitation ng MIA. So kung sila na yung main proponent, anong ibig sabihin nun? Hindi pa rin yung garantiya na sila ang makakakuha? Hindi. Uh, sila na po yung uh, kausap namin, uh, original proponent status, pag nag-agree ho sa terms of preference sa concession agreement, then papasok na naman ho yung Swiss Challenge. Swiss Challenge. Sila po yung kausap. Kailan matatapos po lahat Ang yan? target po namin, kagaya nga ng sinabi ko, matapos din to before the end of the year. So puro the end of this year? Yes, ma'am. Yung sa Clark ngayon, ang, ang nag-rehabilitate ba nun, uh, mega-wide na? Uh, yung terminal ho is mega-wide. Uh, ang target po namin matapos yan is uh, 2020 June. Basta lahat niyang mga dates na yan, kasi lahat na, mar marami na tayong mga pangakong or at least will endeavor to fulfill the deadlines, so most of them by this year. Um, I'd like to hear from the representative of the consortium uh, what, your, what you can promise the public with this particular project of yours to rehabilitate na iya. Anong magiging beneficyo nito para sa ating mga pasayaro? Salamat po, Madam Chair. Um, on behalf of the NIA Consortium, we can promise uh, much improved and world-class uh, gateway for, for Manila. As mentioned by uh, the Secretary Tugade and uh, Yusek Reynosa, our plan really is to build uh, up to a capacity of 47 million after two years, and two years after that, 
265 million. Uh, we plan to really uh, make uh, Naia um, a world-class gateway that um, all Filipinos can be proud of. Saying 65 million passengers? And yes, ma'am, 65 million passengers per year. Paano niyo magagawa yun? Kasi, di ba, there is the infrastructure, there's the technology, and there's the administration. These are three things I think MAP mentioned um, for the success of running an airport. So you will come in in all three aspects, meaning you will add infrastructure. Um, how will you improve on technology? Madam Chair, we plan to put in all the newest available technologies. Like what? In NAIA. Um, we are studying the use of uh, an improved uh, ILS system, for example, to support up in their air navigation. But they have that already now, right? Um, Ma'am, they have the CNS ATM for arrivals. But the ILS uh, is no, for? No, po, ma'am. Um, so the ILS is for landing. Yeah, uh, okay. We are looking at this system called GBAS, which should enable a more flexible landing. Uh, but these are for the newer uh, aircraft. What we are also looking at is ground control radar. So that uh, even so that uh, for all the airplanes that are on the ground, uh, there will be uh, also radar for all of that activity on the ground. It will help with uh, on-time arrivals and departures at the gates themselves. Okay. Uh, um, in addition, we plan to put in the um, we plan to upgrade the baggage handling systems. Uh, typically, uh, baggage handling systems are. Uh, uh, more computerized these days, so we plan to put more of that in. Uh, in addition, we plan to reorganize and change the flow of passenger traffic within the terminals. And then on top of that, we plan to almost double the gross floor area of NAIA to accommodate all the passengers. So, um, Gia Monreal, are you in agreement with them? I mean, you will allow them to be able to design this uh, um, uh, way of uh, running the airport? Well, if they're granted uh, the, uh, the project uh, and the concession, we'll see how they will implement those projects. Okay, but who is your technical advisor on this? Because I, I think for, for certain projects they have, they, they hire, let's say GMR, I know that they hired MITRE to do the study. How about in your case? Ma'am, right now we are working with Changi Airports International. So Changi is the one yes, giving you the correct. technical advice. They're the operator of the best airport in the world, ma'am. So we plan to uh, bring in that expertise. Well, that's, that's uh, reassuring. Can you submit to us if you have a one-pager on what you hope to do for the airport? Yes, ma'am. We can okay. certainly submit that to this committee. Because I think the public uh, ought to know about this. And you said that this will be finished. Uh, Infrastructure-wise, also within two to three years, correct? Um, the first phase, ma'am, is to 47 million. That's in two years, and then after two years after that, up to 65 million. Okay, thanks, Senator Gachalian. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to continue along with uh, Yusek um, Presencio. Uh, kanina na sabi niyo po 257 million passenger capacity na by at some point, which is 2024, and um, that means kung ang present ano ho natin, ang present uh, constrained, no, tawag nyo constrained demand is 65. In effect, we need to at least uh, grow that by close to four to five times in the next, uh, in the next six to seven years. Uh, meron ba ganung karaming pasahero ho tayo by 2024? Hindi po. Ang sinabi ko po, yung, kung matapos yung mga airports, no, yung capacity no, on the basis of what is planned, no, 65 for NAIA, uh, 100 for uh, Bulacan, and then uh, 12 for, uh, for uh, Clark, and then another 70 for uh, Sangli, assuming matapos yung Sangli. All in all, it's over 200 million. Pero hindi ko sinabi yun po yung magiging demand. Ang sinabi ko po, yun ang capacity. Ano po magiging demand? Uh, I, I don't have the numbers, ano, but uh, there is a projected demand done by... Okay, the ano, nga, ano nga ho yun? Hindi, uh, I'm not uh, familiar with the numbers, but we can... Diba give dapat the... importante, malaman muna natin yung demand? Yeah, we can, we can give you the, uh, the detailed uh, uh, demand forecast for uh, the greater capital region traffic. Yeah, because uh, from what I can see right now, 
uh, their strategy is proponent-driven. No, ibig sabihin kung ano pong pinapropose ng mga proponents, yun po yung nasusunod. Pero hindi ho natin nakikita kung ano bang, kabut ano bang mabuti para sa pasahero ho natin. No, dahil, of course, the proponents will propose something that will uh, maximize their profits, but what about our passengers? Meron ba ho tayong isang airport, a, a unified airport strategy, I itemizing all of these four airports? Meron ba ho tayong roadmap of some sort? Meron hong ginawa nung, as uh, mentioned by Secretary Dominguez earlier, may ginawa ho yung uh, consultants funded by the Japanese in 2011. Ano? Nakalagay ho doon yung... Apat na yung, airport. Uh, In-identify ho yung mga airports na yan. Ano? At tapos nakalagay doon ho yung traffic projections. We can give you the traffic forecast. Ma'am, on a later date, we'd like to request the OTR USEC to present to us. Ano ba talaga ang strategy natin? My point here is, ano bang strategy ng gobyerno? No, this is a strategy of the proponent. Pero ano ba strategy ng gobyerno? Take into consideration kung anong mabuti sa ating pasahero. Um, were the airlines consulted in this four airport strategy? Not, not at this time, Mr. Chair. So, the thing is, sa mga airlines, alam ko ang gusto ho nila, mas maraming flights sa isang airport. Eh. Parang the choice nasa pasahero kung anong oras ang pipiliin niya. Apo yun. Ganon din po yung polisiya ng DOTR na bigyan ng uh, But without consulting ang... the airport, the airlines, paano ho magiging epektibo ho yan dito sa for airport strategy? Meron ka ng apat na airport. So, kung, kung apat ang flight ng PAL, di tigi isang flight sila sa tigi isang airport. Ganon mangyayari. Uh, pwede ko bang uh, sabihin ko ulit yung uh, aviation roadmap namin? Uh, if you view the airport, doon lang sa capacity ngayon, uh, you have to view that in relation also to the provi uh, provincial and regional airports which you will improve and which, which you will build. Kaya nga po yung aviation roadmap consists of various phases. Number one, sa first phase is to improve uh, and enhance existing primary gateways. Ano po ito? Yung AIA Terminal 1, 2, 3, and 4, kasama na po dyan yung crime. Kakibat nitong phase 1, paghahanap mo ng ibang bagong airport, nandiyan dyan po yung Sangli, nandiyan dyan po yung Bulacan. Ito po yung phase 1. Yung phase 2 is, kailangan i-develop mo rin yung regional sa mga provincial airports. Kaya nga ho, nagkaroon kami ng uh, matinding programa para sa tinatawag na nitrated capacity. Ngayon ho, madami ho tayong airport, commercial at that, na hindi na ho pwedeng lumipad sa NAIA, Terminal 1, 2, 3, and 4, pagdating ng sunset. Ang ginagawa ho ng tinatawag na nitrated capacity is, pwede pa ho maglakbay sa himpapawid after sunset. So, meron ka ho, ilang, ilang airport ho yun, 44, ah, uh, lalagyan ho natin ng nitrated capacity yan. Uh, noon hong pumasok kami, kung mararapatin po, meron mga 13 or 14 nitrated. Ngayon ho, meron na ho mga mahikit 20. Ang plano ho dyan, lahat ho yung 44 commercially operational airports maging nitrated lahat. Mahirap ho yung gawin nitrated kasi hindi lang ho namang magsimento ka, lagyan mo ng ilaw. Yung nitrated capacity ho, ah, uh, Improvin mo yung runway, yung length, yung width, meron pang ibang lugar dyan, lalagyan mo ng tore. Kaya, by the end of President Duterte's term, it is our hope na ang target na nitrated. Ngayon, pag nagawa mo yung improvement at construction ng mga airport, kailangan kakibat ho nito yung safety, comfort, productivity, and punctuality. Nandiyan dyan ho ngayon yung communication, navigation, surveillance, at air traffic management na kung saan. Halos tapos na ho na tinapos namin ngayon taon na to. Ngayon ho, ang operation ng uh, CNS ATM nasa shadowing. Ibig sabihin, parallel operation ho yan, Madam Chair. Yung dating manual, saka ngayon, uh, ginagamit yan. Ang habol ho namin cut over yan by end of October. Ibig kong sabihin, yung mismong tinayo namin na communication, navigation, surveillance, air traffic management system, by end of October, solo na ho yun, wala na yung manual. This is the entire generic uh, 
platform upon which the aviation roadmap of the Department of Transportation stands. Uh, Madam Chair, I would like to request from the good secretary a presentation of that aviation roadmap as well as yung Greater Manila uh, Airport strategy natin. I think that is the uh, heart of the uh, concern right now. Kasi ho, just by looking at the numbers, I don't think itong apat na airport will survive you know, with the number of passengers we have right now. Even though you add the projections, no, I don't think we will have uh, 257 million passengers traversing in Metro Manila. No, our, parang, parang, uh, I don't know how it will work. No? <laughs> the consequence of that is the viability of those airports. No? Because two of those airports will be, or three, will be privately, uh, uh, privately built. So, on a later date, ma'am, we can oh, ask uh, the, the department to explain and to enlighten us no, on, this, uh, on this strategy. Uh, we will comply, sir. Yeah. But uh, suffice it at this moment to say, na yung mga negosyante, yung mga proponent ho, did their own studies. Na kung saan, sabi natin, no government guarantee, no subsidy in any form or shape, no poaching of accounts from existing airports, uh, the government will maintain monitoring, quality of service, and tariff and uh, rates, yung plete, kasi may social impact yan. Alam ho lahat nila yan. So, in their own proposals, they are aware of, of this aviation roadmap. So, they did their own pencil pushing na itutuloy nila yung proyekto at hindi. So, pais it to say, yung kung, um, request of the Honorable Senator uh, Gatchalian, we will do a submission, sir. Madam Chair, since meron tayong isang proponent dito from the consortium, after hearing all of these um, proposals, no, yung apat na airport, 257 million additional uh, capacity in the next uh, seven to eight years, tutuloy niyo pa ba itong project? Do you think it will still be viable for your consortium to pursue uh, I understand that's how much po yung project ko ninyo? 102 billion pesos. 102, do you think it will still be viable? Absolutely, Your Honor. I think uh, our, our solution is really meant to be a short to medium term solution that our, our, our uh, citizens need early as possible time. It is really up to the DOTR to decide uh, what will happen to NAIA after the 15 year concession. Um, since you might be awarded that uh, rehabilitation of NAIA. What do you plan to do in terms of terminal fees? Will you increase it and by how much? Um, Ma'am, that is still under negotiation and uh, we recognize the discretion of the DOTR to regulate those rates. So I'm sure that uh, it will be uh, fair for all concerned. So, Cebu po ba malaki ba ang tinaas ng terminal fee doon? Ano po? Sa Cebu Airport. Ah, sa Cebu Airport to? Tum ang alam ko kasi, nung dati kami nag-usap dito, hindi naman nila masyadong tinaas ang terminal fee at par rin dito sa Metro Manila, eh, di ba? You want to answer that? Magkano, magkano ba yung terminal fee ngayon sa Cebu? Hindi naman tumaas, Cebu. Mas mataas yung Cebu, di ba? By how much? Mas mataas yung Cebu. Kaya nga po, uh, meron nga sa kondisyonis na linalagay namin ngayon, Sa original proponent status, as you grant the original proponent status, three things states with the government. Ano yon? The monitoring of quality service. Pangalawa, yung taripa and rate. Na wala ho sa agreement no, parang naging pre-willing na ho yata noon yun. Uh, pangatlo ho, yung tinatawag na uh, security concerns. Kasi nga, alam natin ho naman ngayon, matindi yung terrorism, sa yung kwan, kailangan yung terrorism, yung standards of quality, saka yung rate and taripa, mesay pa rin ang yung kopyerno. Okay. Um, basta yun lang ang ating babantayan. Alam ko, you know, for this consortium, if I may speak freely, I, I know it's also for the interest of the investors there because like uh, some, of, some, some members of that consortium actually have airlines. So you want the airports to run efficiently. And that in itself is a return on your investment if it's run efficiently. So, but we need to be able to ensure also that terminal fees won't skyrocket because of that. That's, it's just a reminder. I'm sure Secretary Tugade, that's what you intend to, uh, to safeguard also. Another thing is um, I would like to hear from the Management Association of the Philippines 
uh, in terms of your sector, sir, what what do you think is the most practical and rate? Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, we have been closely monitoring the situation in the uh, aviation sector, and we have uh, consulted uh, aviation experts, local and foreign. Now, we, we take a holistic view to this uh, problem, and uh, we, uh, we believe that a uh, aviation system approach uh, with uh, complementation of existing government airports uh, air, airports will be uh, the uh, uh, ideal approach. Uh, in fact, we uh, support the uh, complementation strategy of the uh, Department of uh, Transportation. Now, uh, we do not look at NAIA in isolation of uh, current developments. So we consider all of these, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, the developments mentioned by Secretary Tugade uh, were factored into uh, our study and our conclusion. Now, we believe that the fastest, uh, most effective solution to the current uh, air traffic congestion is the upgrade of NAIA. Now, beyond NAIA, uh, complemented by Clark and Subic, beyond these three airports, um, we are aware that uh, there are uh, ongoing proposals and conditions uh, being imposed by government. And uh, apparently, uh, these are to, uh, to protect government interests and at the same time, uh, government-owned uh, airports, no? Now, uh, the private sector is quite sensitive to uh, the fiscal health of the government. And uh, we can understand where Secretary Dominguez is coming from. Uh, especially uh, now with the situation in the emerging markets, we have seen the, uh, the uh, currencies of certain emerging economies uh, collapsing, uh, particularly Indonesia, Rupiah is at a historic low, uh, that of Turkey, India as well. So uh, we, uh, we, we uh, support uh, a prudent approach to uh, uh, large capital projects. Now, on the question of uh, demand and capacity, uh, Senator Sherwin Gatchelian asked uh, a question. And I suggest that, uh, Madam Chair, you refer to the study, to the report of JICA, uh, dated 2014. Uh, particularly uh, Table 2.1, page 3. And according to the study of JICA, the uh, demand projection for NAIA for international passengers is 5.2%. For domestic passengers, it is 5.2% as well. Now, for Clark, it is higher. It's 8.8 percent per year increase uh, for, from 2012 up to 2020. So you're saying, because I, I initially mentioned six percent growth yes. per year, and I was told that it is about three percent or four percent. So you're saying JICA says it's actually until eight uh, percent. For NAIA, it's 5.2 percent for 5 .2. both international and domestic. But for Clark, it's much higher. It is 8.8 percent for international and 10 percent for domestic. What we use in, in uh, our study is 6 percent, which is reflected in my article right. today. Uh, I, yes. If you can give me a, a copy again of the JICA study, 2014. Do you have a copy of that, sir? Actually, the government should have a copy of that. It's in the NEDA website. Oh, we okay. will uh, submit, Your Honor. Okay. Um, before we wrap up on this particular hearing, I would like to ask uh, GM Monreal. Uh, I, I know, sir, and dami mo pang inaasikaso, pero kailangan natin paghandaan. Ang dinig ko... Um, Magkakaroon, baka magkaroon tayo ng Super Typhoon Neneng, no? This Wednesday. 
So, ang ibig sabihin nun, uh, ito ay magiging three, uh, from 250 to 306 kilometers per hour of maximum winds. So, paghandaan natin, ano pong iniisip, alam ba ninyo yun? Madam, uh, Madam Chair, if it's regarding typhoon, it's actually easier to manage in the sense that it, we can predict and we know it's happening. Ginawa na ho namin yan sometime uh, almost uh, more than a year ago. Nung nagkaroon ho tayo ng isang uh, typhoon na natang tama, direct Manila. Prior to that, dumating ho yung uh, bagyo. Nagsarado na ho tayo ng paliparan in coordination with the airlines. Okay, so nakapaklano so sila. This time, your crisis management team, kahit na hindi naman sa retrieval, but uh, for contingencies, if this happens, please convene as soon as possible to discuss. Um, ayaw natin na may uh, malulungkot at magre-reklamong walang makain sa airport dahil hindi na-cancela yung mga flights kaagad-agad. Pero kung sakasakali, uh, Mr. Gia Monreal, alam ko naman marami na tayo natutunan sa mga nakaraan, no? pero uh, yung pera po ng airport, gamitin po natin para sa mga pasahero. Sir. Sama ho yun. Actually, mayroon ho kaming uh, meeting mamayang hapon as regards to the preparatory to this uh, typhoon. Nagpatawag ko ang ating uh, sekretaryo na gagawin ho ngayon pagkatapos ho nitong meeting para pag-usapan ho kung paano gagawin ito. Uh -oh. So, with that, uh, it's 1.03. We need to wrap up this meeting. Uh, today's hearing provided the committee with the remaining details needed to craft a comprehensive report. First, we learned that CAP's investigation on the Shaman incident is still ongoing. Uh, maybe if it takes more time, I might ask for an executive session eventually, but for now, uh, we will let it uh, go through its proper course. Second, we were informed of the existence of a disabled aircraft removal plan, which sets the protocols for such incidents. Specifically, the primary responsibility to remove disabled aircraft lies with the airline operator. Finally, and most important, we heard the testimony of affected passengers. On the third point, nakakabahala ang mga narinig natin. Kulang sa pagkain at upuan, mahina ang sound system, hindi malaman kung kailan matutuloy ang kanilang flight. Pati sa pagbook ng accommodation, nahihirapan. At mismong mainit na tubig para sa kape at cup noodles ay pinagkakitaan ng 10 piso. Dapat yung mga concessionaires yan sa airport, pagsabihan rin not to take advantage of a situation. Um, I would also like to ask, we need to review our contingency, contingency plans for such situations. I would like to ask the cab board to please assist passengers um, who have any concerns. Um, you said that you're already going to help Ms. Rosario and the others also who are experiencing uh, situations uh, like that. Um, the crisis management teams need to be um, meeting to establish greater coordination between airlines and MIA, not on a voluntary basis, but mandatory. Um, sir, pwede mo silang sabihan. These hearings were not meant to disparage the efforts of our airport and airline staff. Kasi dealing with irate, hungry, and tired passengers is not an easy task. At marami alam ko na sa inyo talaga did their best also given the situation and we are learning from this even the general manager you were basically crucified i mean when when everybody was talking about this but we we see the effort moving forward now and i hope that uh we will prevent this from happening again i mean we, we get not really a free pass but i think that we should be a little bit more considerate because this is the first time it has happened uh, this way. These lessons will be enshrined in our committee report for the reference of future generations. Finally, without preempting the findings of our committee report, we seek the following outcomes from those who participated in our proceedings. Number one, CAAP should immediately complete its investigation and issue recommendations. Second, Shaman Airlines should fully and unconditionally cooperate with the government, especially with regard to the payment of all damages. 
Um, as I mentioned, cab tulungan ang mga pasahero. Air, airline, pag may delay, what will you do? Please submit to us again uh, what your plans would be moving forward and, and also uh, in terms of feeding the passengers that are waiting para hindi masayang din yung pagkain, mga bagay na ganon. On the new airport, um, I would like to thank uh, Secretary Dominguez for, for also joining us today. said that they are, he mentioned and he clarified that the DOF is not the case of delay of the Bulacan Airport or any other projects. Uh, there are considerations which we appreciate, implications to the economy and the state as a whole, the burden to the Filipino public or the advantage, the effect to roads and transportation, financial viability of the corporation. Um, the committee will also assess the issues fully to help the country and, and our countrymen. I would like to ask uh, from you, Sec. Reynoso, the deadlines that you mentioned, all of them, uh, from the Bulacan Airport, the consortium, uh, etc., and the roadmap also from the DOTR, and a copy of the JICA study. Again, I'm sure we have it, but better to have that. The consortium, uh, please submit to us your, your promises, or their, what your plans to improve uh, passenger safety and also convenience. Um, the cab, please give us the matrix for the fuel surcharge. So with that, again, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo. Uh, Ma'am, isang information lang. Uh, we are inaugurating this afternoon the rapid exit taxiway at runway 0624. Ito ho, makakatulong to decongest yung movement sa airport sa runway 0624. Uh, ginawa ho natin ito for uh, 13 months. Congratulations, matagal, matagal sir. Matagal na hong pending. Ito ho, magandang nota na malaman ngayon. Uh, if you are free, come join us. Uh, there will be a simple ceremony. Dapat ho, oh, ano namin last month, kaya lang napagsabihan kami ng mga pungsoy-pungsoy, huwag mag-inaugurate uh, dahil uh, ghost, ghost month. month. Eh, lalo na ho, pagpaliparan daw, eh naniwala naman ho. Kaya kami, kaya mamayang hapon ho, 4.30, uh, operational na ho yun. Well, congratulations sir, kasi pinag-uusapan lang na parang kailan lang na naghihiring tayo. Exit, uh, Opo, taxiway. natapos po yan, ma'am, uh, uh, one year and one month. Congratulations. So, let's prepare for the supposed uh, typhoon that will come in, in on Wednesday. Uh, GM Monreal, uh, sorry, uh, na-stress tayong lahat dito, but I think we learned our lesson naman. So, uh, our committee report will be very fair. It is more constructive than anything else. So, thank you so much for your presence today. This hearing is adjourned. Thank you, Senator Gachalian, also for your presence.